Hey, what's up, nerds? Welcome back. Happy Monday. Today, I got a great guest for you, Felix Prangenberg. And uh, I've been a fan of Felix for years now. He's one of the best writers in the world and also a pretty pretty cool dude. Pretty cool dude, man. Uh, Canode Knows is brought to you by Dig. Smash like, hit subscribe, hit the bell notification, and share the show with some friends. That's all I ask. I hope you enjoy this conversation with Felix. About halfway through, we break down his alarm part. And uh, yeah, we cover everything. Everything you want to know about Felix. It's in here. So I don't know what else to say. Here, let's get into it. Felix Prangenberg. Hi, Felix. What's up? What's up? <laughs> How many, your English is pretty good. How, how many languages do you speak? Uh, just two, German and English. That's did, it. Did they make you learn it in school or did you learn it from like traveling and shit? Uh, both, I guess. But yeah, you, like you start learning English in like fifth grade, I guess. And nice. Until I did like 10 years of school. And then, I mean, I started traveling quite early. And when I first went to like the States, I could pretty much understand any, anything. Yeah. But just like talking was pretty hard. So I was just that shy little kid that couldn't really talk. <laughs> yeah. How old were you when you first went to the States? Uh, 15, I think. Holy shit. Yeah, I just turned 15. And um, yeah, after that, I was like, shit, I really want to get good at English. Yeah. And, uh, yeah. Just Job had well to. Done. Nine years later, you sound like you, you speak, you've speak been speaking it your whole life. <laughs> Thank That's you. That's dope. Appreciate it. So, so shit. Pretty, like, 15 years old and going to the States for the first time. Well, how did that happen? Um, that was actually that Red Bull Phenom X Games thing. They were kind of doing like a video um, talent, like Young Guns video uh, contest. Sweet. So you had to film like a video, just raw, one minute long, put it up on YouTube. Nice. And six people got invited to LA uh, for the X Games. And Hell yeah. I first didn't really want to be a part of it because I was like, oh, I'm like, I'm not going to make it anywhere anyways. Yeah. So why even try? And then some <laughs> people kind of like pressured me into it. It was like, no, nah, you, you, like they, they were like, yeah, you should do it. It's like, okay, I guess. And then I uh, yeah. yeah, ended up going there within like two weeks notice, had to get a passport and everything. Wow. Um, yeah, so like probably like the most uh, insane memory to me. That's where I always wanted to like go with BMX or anything. So yeah, yeah it, was, it was a big thing. Still, that a is, big thing it's a huge thing, like, especially yeah. for being 15 years old, dude. And how long were you riding at that point? How did you start riding and how long were you riding when you were 15? So, my dad's always been super into bikes, into mountain biking. His um, one, like his best friend, he used to be one of the best German downhill riders. Sick. So, uh, when I was like two, they would just like bring me to his races and they would just like stand on the side and like cheer him on yeah so um i got my first bike with like when i was like two and a half i could wow. barely walk yeah um, and yeah so i got like a, got a mountain bike pretty early um because i just wanted to ride my bike even that first like 12 inch like normal kids bike pretty much rode that every day as far as i can remember that's so crazy um, Damn, yeah, you were I mean, on it before you could walk. That's <laughs> pretty much, yeah. I think I was better at riding bikes than actually walking. That explains a lot. Holy <laughs> shit. Uh, yeah, and I just rode uh, mountain bikes with my, my dad um, pretty early on. Uh, raced a couple races, just like uh, like the cross-country kind of mountain bike races. Sick. Um, yeah, and uh, do you know Petty Kroos? No. It's like... German legend. He lives in what does he live? Not Oakland. I can't remember. He lives in the States. Uh now he it's like pretty big name back then. Still like pretty I don't know. Just like his inspiration back then. He uh wrote for the same company that my friend's dad uh did. Uh my, my dad's friend that way, yeah. sorry. <laughs> yeah. Uh, <laughs> my and, friend's dad. And, uh, <laughs> And they actually wrote a show for my dad's 30th birthday in front of our house. Nice. So, I mean, I was like super small, but I don't know. Bikes have always been around me. Yeah. So got a BMX when I was like five, probably. Oh, holy shit. <laughs> yeah. So that's I was around, expecting yeah. like 10, 11, 12. No, five. <laughs> BMX yeah, bike with five. So 
Yeah, about like almost 20 years this year, I guess. That's awesome. And yeah, you're turning 25 this year. I looked at your yeah. Wikipedia and I was like, oh, yeah. <laughs> it's the one. There's there's a Wikipedia for Felix Prangenberg. You're an oh. X Games winner and X Games silver medalist and gold medalist. And it reminded And then I, I was like, oh, shit, he did win X Games Real Street. So I went back and watched that. It's crazy. Like, you've had the wildest couple of years. Um, fucking A. But I want to stay at the at the beginning. Yeah, I, I started out on a mountain bike too. I, I thought downhill and like just the mountain bike, big jumps and stuff. There's a, there's a mountain bike DVD called Rome, R O A M. And I, that, that was like, I worshiped that when I first got into riding. And then I learned how to 180 on a mountain bike before I learned oh, that sick. BMX was cool. You know, I, what about you? I, what was your first learning shit? I guess honestly, my dad showed me how to balance on a bike in in our living room in front of the tv <laughs> <laughs> sick um and then just like i guess hopping down like a curb then some there was like a two stair um in our neighborhood so that was like the first thing i would just like jump down nice. um, and at five years like old a, or what uh, probably yeah five yeah. six years old like I, amazing yeah i was i was racing mountain bike race when i was like six seven i always brought my bmx to those races to first do the race and then actually ride my bmx on like the dirt track sick uh, pump track and stuff so yeah i guess it's like bunny hops and whatever and i mean i was like so tiny had yeah. no like energy to actually do like a 180 on flat or whatever but yeah, yeah. like i guess like the first couple of things were just like what everyone kind of starts with just like dropping off of stuff dude. dropping yeah. off stuff that used yeah. to be so yeah. fun i still remember like being a oh, kid definitely. and just dropping off something that's you know this high and just like oh yeah. my god i did it you know so yeah. that's so pure i mean, like, kind of miss those lining like, up stuff putting the bike up and yeah yeah and getting hurt just drop dropping off of something i remember <laughs> man um i don't i the like the feeling of being young and all stoked on it. And then the older you get, the more you're like, okay, your standards get raised and your standards just keep on raising. Like, it's kind of crazy to watch. Like I watched, I just watched a video of you for, from four years ago where you did an up rail to 360, hard 360 toboggan. And I'm like, Jesus Christ, this is four years ago. And then he's still <laughs> progressing since then. You actually do one of my dream tricks when I was, in my prime of riding, I had 540 cabs pretty good. And I kept dreaming, like, I could do a 720 cab off of, like, a loading dock or something. And I'm using pedal pressure and, like, engaging yeah. the coaster. And then you come along and you're just doing them just yeet. Like, you don't use any <laughs> pressure at all, dude. Uh, so how, what does a 720 cab feel like? And was it a hard one to learn? I can't really remember when I did. Oh, I actually do remember when I did the first one. I think it was with Crand, actually. With what? Yeah, with Crand, uh, filming for a video in in Cali. Oh, nice. Um, it's like this like bank curb, like up curb kind oh, of thing. Oh yeah, is it the one uh, on the bricks? The bricks. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I yeah. just watched that video. That yeah, was your first so one, huh? I think that was my first one. Yeah, that's a I've had that one in mind for a while. Yeah. Um, and when I saw that clip, I was like, I've been there, and I full capped out of that. I did, and then you did seven twenty <laughs> cab out of that. Holy shit. <laughs> Yeah, I just knew it from like, I don't, I mean, pretty much all the videos. I think Dill did like some pretty fucked up there as well. Yeah. Like the year before. So he just kind of went back and I don't know. Now it's like sometimes, like sometimes I've surprised myself doing them. I'm like, where the fuck did that come from? Honestly, <laughs> it's just like, I don't know. I feel like my frame geometry kind of helps with it as well. It's like super steep. It's like everything's like super direct do you understand um, frame and geometry stuff because i don't really what makes a bike good for spinning because honestly i want five caps back so what do i need what kind of frame do i need do i need the Felix, <laughs> do i need the Felix frame? I, I guess <laughs> uh, what makes a bike I mean, spin better so i'm riding like a 76 degree head tube which is either 0 0.5 or one degree steeper than most frames are okay um and Actually, like I knew that I wanted to have that geometry for a whole while. Like when I was still riding an 18 inch bike, we got like a mankind flatland frame, which had that geometry, like the 76 degree head tube. Okay. And that already helped with tail, uh, tail whips and stuff back then. 
So okay. when I actually had the opportunity to do my own frame, I was like, this is the head tube angle I want to want to do. That's I have sick. no idea about like the like the was it not the standover? Uh, was all the, like the bottom bracket height and whatever? I have yeah. no idea what that does. <laughs> Me neither. Dude. I'm like, all right, looks cool. <laughs> but, I guess. Yeah, but I yeah I guess like a steep front end helps with like any kind of spin. So I'm running like a short stem, short fork, like a 15 mil fork. Okay, I'm gonna um, switch my bike up after this interview right now, dude. <laughs> go to we the people.com <clears throat> that is who you read for right? yeah. we the people yeah 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 what's yeah. your signature frame called pathfinder ah uh, yeah i just watched that promo let's see yeah why is it called pathfinder uh i guess at the time where i actually got the frame i had like a van i was just like i guess i was like 18 uh i grew up in a like super small village i always wanted to get out of there just yeah. always wanted to travel and I felt like it was kind of like a cool name for like finding my path. I don't know, like trying yeah. to like see where I'm going kind of. And then towards the end, it kind of like, uh, we made it work with like the, the Reaper kind of uh, designs, like that kind of pathfinder. I don't know. It's like, yeah, yeah <laughs> that's, that's like where it, that makes that's sense. where it, that's where it came from. Tell me about this village. <laughs> What was like the image in my head is like tents and shit, but I know it's not that. Tell me, tell me about the village you grew up in. So, I mean, it's like super small. A thousand people live there. Um, my whole family grew up there pretty much. Like everyone still lives there. I, I was able to see my my grandparents, like both of my grandparents, like pretty much every day. My That's mom awesome. had her own shop. Uh, still has. What kind of shop? Uh, uh, she just like. Uh, medical pedicure uh cool. and that kind of stuff and then my dad he's like a not a carpenter uh forgot the name for it he works with his with my grandpa his brother in a company uh my brother is actually doing like an apprenticeship there as well so it's like a full like uh like full family run family business, business. that's sick uh, you got entrepreneurs for parents <laughs> yeah that's fire <laughs> how have they been yeah. like as far as uh well let's keep talking about your village yeah. that's dope so, it's like pretty much in the middle of nowhere it's like uh either like 30 minutes to like a little bit city, a bigger city like Bonn this is where like max Gertig is from where like is originally from yeah. and then an hour away is like cologne and that's where we always ended up going to because we had like the indoor park here yeah so kind of always felt like home in cologne um is that yeah, where you like are now pretty, yeah that's where, yeah. I, where i've been living now uh, a couple, last couple of years um so it's just like pretty hilly kind of like in the oh fuck i forgot the name too. valley <laughs> yeah in the valley yeah it's yeah. like in the valley kind of in the valley it's like uh like 15 minutes by car to the next train station um so my parents pretty much had to drive me anywhere to ride um, to, yeah to go riding uh either my dad like my dad drove me to cologne once or twice a week for like 10 years straight wow Just shout out dad yeah and then That's fucking the weekend, awesome. we went to like some some jams some contests in germany sick oh so they've always been super supportive but yeah the, there was no one really to ride with um yeah. eventually when i was like 14 maybe uh a friend that I, like first uh, filmed my first videos with, he uh, moved to that village as well with his dad. So on some days I had someone to ride. Nice, but yeah. On the most, I just rode for myself, uh, rode by myself. Uh, school holidays, like every single morning, nine o'clock in the morning, went out by myself and just rode my bike all day. Dude, that's awesome. Uh, that's pure. Yeah. And when you're like that young, you don't have a car. It's also like your hobby but it's also like your freedom vehicle you get to pedal away from your parents house you know yeah exactly um yeah and we had like some when it was like i think like nine or ten um my dad uh and me kind of like work uh like talk to the mayor of the village and we're trying to get a little bit of like land to build some trails uh, and we actually Got that for a couple of years uh, where we could just do whatever we wanted. We had like a bigger like dirt jump line, like a 200 meter long pump track. Nice. Um, so I had something to ride. 
Um, but yeah, just most of the time by myself, I guess. <laughs> yeah. It seems like you can ride pretty much anything. Park, dirt, maybe vert. Have you ever ridden a vert ramp? That might, that's scary so fuck. fucking scary, dude. <laughs> <laughs> I dropped in like once or twice. And as soon as I'm going up to the coping, I get like this like all like weird feeling. Yeah, in my stomach. I'm like, I oh, can't do it. <laughs> yeah i get that feeling just going up in the air at all man I, I, I know what you're talking about yeah what's your favorite or what was your uh let's go back like when i don't know you're young and you're probably just doing everything like riding street riding dirt Pretty much just um, whatever i had who was your first like you geek out on meeting them type pro did you meet anybody at a jam when you were young that you were like holy shit that's them or what mm. videos were you watching like because you're I mean, you're young so like when you were like coming of age or 13 or 14 like i think youtube and vimeo were already going and what was like your influences when you were younger so i think one of my most influential video pods back then were was like the mike aitken electronical pod yeah like mike aitken was like my favorite rider he just wrote everything i was like had like the best style to like best style for real like so much cool stuff and i wrote a lot of trails a lot of transition growing up um so i just like always looked up to him and then obviously like bruno was like a couple years older than i am yeah and uh he's been killing it for so long for he, real he, i think he, he pushed like uh, the full side of like technical street riding like pretty early big time like all the like the fa like the fakey manual stuff yeah uh, all like the seventh fakey that's where i got it from honestly yeah <laughs> it's like that kind of stuff um so bruno was always like a big inspiration uh growing up he's like he kind of had what i was dreaming of that's where i wanted to be at some point you know just like yeah. traveling and just riding my bike and um yeah i guess like yeah it's like Mike Aitken on that kind of side and I'm like I've known Bruno for like so long and yeah back then he was doing like so much cool shit already so yeah I'm trying to remember what early Bruno. videos of Bruno he was in like the federal uh federal did they do one in Cologne federal Cologne did yeah there's like the federal Cologne video he, he wrote for like Carhartt and stuff East Pack that was oh, like yeah was Carhartt Bruno, was in actually. BMX yeah i forgot about that that's wild yeah i can imagine if they would be coming back yeah it's it's interesting how many people or companies have come into bmx and then just like ah oh, never mind it's not making yeah. money like Levi's, especially around that Carhartt. time i feel like yeah there are like so many like big companies in for like a couple of years even when they're just like sponsoring like big contests events yeah. it's like, weird we always had like the bmx wars bmx masters here in cologne which yeah. is like one of the most legendary contest in the world pretty much yeah they had like suzuki uh suzuki yeah that's yeah. fucking nuts like brown mini ramp contest all that it's like just like big big sponsors actually yeah, yeah when when was your stuff. first uh like big competition like My simple session or whatever i guess it was all the way back to riding bmx masters when i was like seven what <laughs> <laughs> yeah and uh, i actually got like a little scar on my wrist from, from the first contest which is sick. pretty cool yeah bmx masters um, yeah bmx masters and then we had like this like um what's called rookie jam we had that once a year in the indoor park that was like for like the the newcomers all the like ams and it was like a like a kid's class and everything did you um, did you do good or did you get hurt and uh, just have a scar? I, no, I think actually, like the first one I wrote, I got like third. When I was like, fuck I yeah. Know, eight, eight or nine. Dude, what uh, the fuck? Yeah. <laughs> I didn't know you were a phenom when you were young, dude. That's <laughs> awesome. <clears throat> well, uh, yeah. What about now? Who, who do you look up to now? And like, how do you, it seems like you just keep getting better. I was talking to Jordan about you and you just keep progressing. And he's like, I can't keep up. <laughs> uh, I mean, I can't keep up with his rail stuff like for so long already i don't yeah. know how he does it but yeah you guys are both <laughs> nuts <started. laughs> you were just with um, him in uh barcelona right yeah we we're just in barcelona filming for freak for the monster video yeah let's talk about that instead Go, we'll come back we'll come we'll come back <laughs> yeah, to easy. progression but how was your trip yeah. to bcn uh yeah quite good we all got some stuff um we actually just went there 
because of myself because i was trying to get a clip that i didn't get the last time yeah um which i didn't get this time again. yeah i didn't get it <laughs> did you try I was like no we went back to the spot it was like it was this monday woke up kind of like shitty weather super windy um my body was just aching from the last couple of days yeah um went to the spot and i was just not feeling it at all so i was kind of frustrated and like pissed off for half of the day yeah uh just i don't know just tried to not stress about it and um just kept going wrote a couple other spots jordan got some stuff alex got some stuff hell yeah so, um, is that everybody that was on the trip was you rich alex jordan yeah exactly who else? And, and then Lewis Lou is in the video. Will have a part, yeah. And that's it. That's it. That's gonna be the craziest fucking video, dude. I'm so excited. Have I'm, you seen? I'm super excited to see the whole thing. Yeah. Have you Have you been watching your part as it as it gets built, or like what's mm. what's it like? What's the process with filming with Rich? So the first couple of trips, he would send like a timeline uh, right away, like two days after the trip. Yeah. Um, because it's fresh. He's stoked. Yeah, yeah exactly um but i haven't seen my timeline since since the last trip to vienna i think which i have no idea when that was honestly nice. maybe like august september okay. something like that uh, and then we went to mallorca Barcelona <laughs> after um jordan got some stuff in cape town when rich more and me were filming for, uh, something for vans cool um, rich but yeah now murray loves her uh yeah exactly yeah 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 love that dude yeah he's super cool yeah it's it pretty cool awesome. hanging out and getting the whole cape town experience uh, yeah that's fun. what's up um so yeah now i think rich is trying to get like the the timeline ready i think he has like two two songs already um and he's kind of i think he was scared that i don't like him it's like i'm usually like pretty hands-on with like videos yeah i always have like my own vision i always want my videos to have like a certain style and feel to them i feel like yeah like, i can see that why isn't everything yeah and um, when we started filming with ridge i was like i mean i was kind of like intimidated for like filming with him at first yeah and then i would be I was too. surprised when he was like oh yeah you can like if you want me to film it from somewhere else like change the angle just let me know it's like oh okay cool nice uh, um so, but yeah i just want him to like let uh like i just want to let him do his thing yeah and get the full on rich form pod and yeah uh, see like how he sees i don't know like all of us like what music he thinks works with our riding yeah and, it yeah, usually like, works I'm, out pretty good dude whatever oh, rich yeah, does yeah, is definitely. pretty great and that's awesome yeah so i don't think there's no, uh, anything to be scared about um nah. Yeah. Is this your first yeah. project with him? Yeah, first project. No shit. That's awesome. Um, it's like we met up like last year in, oh shit, uh, so that was like 2021. Yeah, in Mallorca when I was still filming with David for my last monster video. Urge. Um, yeah, Urge. Yeah. yeah. Uh, because he hit me up and asked if we want to do like a monster project, whatever. And I just like met up and talked for a little bit just to like meet each other, actually see how that goes and, yeah but yeah uh it's been pretty fun it's been a good experience also from like the filming uh point of view just like seeing him do things seeing him like sh like choosing the angles and stuff yeah like, cool to see like yeah see both sides of it yeah because you film too so you can appreciate that shit right yeah what, yeah exactly what camera because i i don't know I'm sure everybody knows you film, but what do you film with? And uh, how long have you, when did you start getting into filming? I actually just ended up on Vimeo like a couple of weeks ago and I found some super old stuff that, that like, just like, you know, like how everyone starts to put their GoPro on a tripod and then like put some music over it. Yeah. Uh, <clears throat> and I got to look like, the, over that the last... shit up. <laughs> <laughs> Over the last two years, uh, I was filming with like a Panasonic AGAC90. And, yeah, that's the um, hottest camera right now. Everybody's on that. Yeah, pretty much. Eddie got one as well now. Yep. Uh, yeah, and then the Mark II Fisheye. Um, nice. 
and I just built like built up a new setup last year, um, which I just started to use actually, and got rid of the Panasonic, um, like a Sony Alpha six thousand five hundred. Same. And then with the um, Canon A two fifty mil fish. Nice. That's perfect. That's all you need. Yeah. What about a handle? Much. Uh, I just it's like a small rig, wooden handle. Bought perfect. it off my friend Anton that I filmed yeah. my last video with, and uh, I got like a screen for on top of it, so nice. it like just makes filming fish kind of easier. Yeah. You don't have to like look through the the handle and everything yeah that's a proper setup dude yeah, yeah it's been fun filming with it actually if people are listening they should go to vimeo.com and search felix because <laughs> this is so sick i'm looking at you riding an indoor skate park with a blue hoodie on oh, from like, the, the green house is that, is that like yeah a, a day in greenhouse green with felix house. prangenberg yeah. holy shit yeah, we had man. that park for like a couple of years it was like 10 minutes from our house away but they had to close down after like two years so uh, 12 years ago you are 20 and no you're you're 12 I'm years old in this video yeah yeah holy shit flow in the box jumps hitting holy shit man all right I'm gonna honestly without that place i wouldn't be where i'm at right now like i believe it training it was yeah it was open only from like thursday to sunday but I, I was able to just like let them know that i'm coming and they opened up for me nice so hell yeah just <laughs> from school homework and then my, my mom or someone just dropped me off pretty much nice when did uh, you when did it become like a career or like i don't know did you like yeah was there a moment where you're like uh yeah this is what i'm gonna do like, um i guess the first time i actually realized right yeah probably like the year when i went to the states um it was like Red Bull, that Red Bull Phenom X Games thing. It was like the BMX World here in Cologne. Uh, it's a big year. Like, we got like third or something. And then uh, Akeem, uh, like he was the Nike Europe manager. Okay. And like, he was, I don't know, he like took me everywhere. He just took care of me for so long. He was the best ever yeah. helped me out so much and he like, gave me his bike back um for like the first time flying and after that he was like uh yeah you you can just have it i think you're gonna you're gonna need it i was like what for <laughs> <laughs> he saw and, it in you yeah and i guess like the the year after um i got a nike pro contract and dude sick that was like the year i was at um just like getting out of school and everything and yeah that's where i was like oh i think i can actually mm, I, I hopefully a living out of this at some point and yeah. then, uh, it's been like over seven years now where that's like my main income pretty much it's your job it's fucking yeah. awesome man congrats it is, it is pretty dream pretty come true cool. man yeah it feels super privileged to do oh. something yeah what we're doing like what was your super low kids like yeah, right. That's what I <laughs> explain to people who don't ride, and I'm like, yeah, I, I do stunts on a BMX or a kid's BMX bike, you know. And they're like, oh, <laughs> oh, cool, dude. Like, yeah, I guess it is. <laughs> you know what? <laughs> we love it. <clears throat> what was your first sponsor experience? Like, who hooked you up first? Was Nike the first one or no? Um, it was actually the first one. Yeah, when I was like, <laughs> that's fucking nuts. Dude. <laughs> Mom, Dad, I'm actually... on Nike. <laughs> yeah it was kind of it was a little bit different but so it was at one of those rookie jams okay um here in cologne i think it was like the first year of riding it or like the second one um i must have been like eight yeah yeah probably eight and there was someone from nike it was like nike 6.0 back then yeah i remember uh and they were like kind of looking for like yeah just like young phenoms yep. And they came up, came up to my dad and was like, yo, is this your kid? Like, we want to like, kind of help him out with shoes and whatever. And my dad was pretty skeptical. I was like, ah, he hasn't been riding long. He, I just want him to have fun. So, I mean, you can like leave your number or email or whatever. <laughs> no, we can, like, he gave here. the cold shoulder to Nike. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I'll give you a call. 
and then like a year later they were back there at that contest and okay. we talked to them again and actually ended up like getting shoes of nike since i was like nine so that's so nuts um yeah and then i had like some bmx and dirt shop kind of like helping me out with like free parts in there or just like a good price yeah like discount um, nice which at this point i mean i wasn't making any money so it made it easy for my parents yeah so, for real uh, that's amazing what about uh yeah. proper frame sponsor has it been we the people since day one or were you on uh, no i was actually on premium uh before cool um so akeem he was um he had this distro called fast pace and he was the distributor for like premium colony like a couple of brands yeah and um i got my first 20 inch bike of him out of all parts i had like a it was like a custom premium gutter shock frame like a shorter one uh, like a 20.5 and got like some some crazy titanium profile set up and stuff that he just like had laying around and uh he was taking care of the whole nike thing at this point already and when i was like 15 probably he was like you want to ride for premium i was like okay of course yes, so so premium was like my like premium through fast pace was my first sponsor and then Same. when we went out like the year after like out to cali actually went to see everyone at premium and harrow bc was like super close uh with them he's like a german vert legend pretty much he okay uh so he he knows everyone out there so yeah, yeah just like felt kind of like pretty close to the company even though i was riding for them through a distro which was pretty cool yeah um yeah and at some point i was just like at that point where i did, needed to make decisions like what i want to do with the whole bmx thing and yeah and actually, this is you're young to be thinking about that shit right you're at, this is your yeah. 15 years old and you're like oh what what's the what's the path pathfinding yeah. <laughs> pathfinding yeah <laughs> pretty much i mean my, my parents taught me like how to write emails and everything with like people that supported me i, I, I was writing for like some clothing brand like kind of early mm -hmm. um and they taught me like how to like that i had to write those emails with them yeah uh, and be in contact with them and like end of the year I, we would send them like something just like a little thank you yeah nice uh, because i mean it's insane it's like some little kid that's just getting free free clothes or whatever and like what are they actually getting out of it you know yeah um they just they your parents are dope they showed you how to be a pro like how to be a professional that's yeah, awesome I, I, yeah i think they did a pretty good job of like a lot of things actually but just with parenting like, yeah uh, um i'm thankful for how i was able to grow up and what they did over all those years for me, especially with like riding and stuff yeah. that they supported me the way they did. And how do uh, they feel about all these yeah. tattoos? Uh, my mom <laughs> actually started getting tattoos two months before I did. Nice. Um, and my dad's always been like, oh yeah, no hands, no neck. <laughs> <laughs> but like, I, I always knew that I wanted to be like fully covered. Yeah. And, it's like, dope. Coming home with like my hand tattoo was definitely like the vibe was a bit off. <laughs> You're like, hi dad, how's it going? What's up? <laughs> Good to see you, man. <laughs> yeah. yeah, I kind of like that. And I mean at some point they don't didn't really care. I guess that's just like the phase, like as long as it's like not like yeah. right in the right, face. Right, yeah. Not too bad. Not I mean, SoundCloud rapper. No. Just but it's not out of the realm of possibilities. That's one of our Instagram questions I saw earlier. Said somebody said, "When's the face tattoo coming?" <laughs> I mean, I, I got a got a few. Got there you go. Like, yeah. The sideburn tat. Right I face. don't consider that a face tat, dude. That's a good. That's a good yeah, location. Okay. That's swag. Okay. You look good, kid. You look good. I remember. Thank you, thank you. I went. So I was like nineteen or I was twenty, and I went out and stayed at the um, the come up house in Long Beach as like an intern. 
and one night catfish brought out his tattoo gun and he was tattooing like daggers on people and i was just a scared young kid and i was like no my mom's gonna freak out and catfish is like shut up shut up canode get a tattoo so i was like okay just do it on my foot and he just did some weird line shit on my foot just uh, and i'm screaming or not screaming but i'm like wow this hurts oh my gosh so cool and then i showing that to my mom she was like robert <laughs> <laughs> whatever i got a couple more since then but yeah it is it is one of those things where it's like i have a taste of it now i got like one under my arm and one on my thigh and i'm like i kind of want to go all in you know get it yeah like once you started there's like no way back and i feel like with a lot of stuff i'm like a all in or nothing kind of person yeah if you're gonna do it do it your shit looks nice either i'm gonna get tattooed or just leave it (laughs) yeah it's weird to only have a couple but that's where i'm at and it's never too late, dude. I'm 32. I, yeah. I can still tattoo it up. Yeah, of course. Is there any tattoos right. that you have yeah. that are like particularly special or meaningful? Um, yeah, yeah. If you like, just like, got one on my hand, just like before, like, I had surgery. Just like little PMA thing, positive mental attitude. Nice. Uh, just like a little reminder, that kind of stuff. Uh, I guess my first one's always going to be special. Obviously, it was like a like a BMX one, just yeah. as like pedaling forward. Nice. Um, with like a club and stuff. Um, but yeah, every now and then, I feel like kind of like, you know, it definitely has a meaning. Not like most of them don't. Yeah. It's just like, oh, it looks cool. I like okay, both. Get it. <laughs> I like how where it's like this means a lot, and then all of a, this one just looks cool. Like it. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. When people are like, and this one is representing my grandmother, and this one is my sister. And this, <laughs> this is the bloodline. Oh, no. You know, I'm like, all right, <laughs> chill out, dude. <laughs> you just like how they look. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. All right. Um. So we did talk about influences, but I want to know who's the first person you saw in person that you were like, holy shit, that's them. Like, did you ever meet Mike Aiken or um, who was your I first? I never like... did, but I guess like, so just like kind of growing up with having the BMX masters here. Yeah. Like bros, all bros from all come. over the world would come here. Yeah. So I guess the first time I was actually starstruck, I was like nine. It was like, I was standing in front of Matt Hoffman. Holy shit. Yeah. And that'll do it. <laughs> So, and it was like some sort of like TV stuff um, back then because I was like one of the youngest. Um, they've known me from that Rookie Jam thing. Uh, and then I got to meet Matt Hoffman and it's pretty sit rad. on the couch with him. And I think it was like someone kind of like translating and stuff. I can't, I can't remember, but I still got like a hat um, that he signed and said, go big, uh, tr- trim big, go big. Fuck yeah, uh, dude. I bet um, Matt Hoffman's yeah. proud of you. I wonder if he remembers <laughs> that. I bet he does. Do you remember be, sitting on a couch with an... <laughs> Hey, Matt, do you remember sitting on a couch with a nine-year-old German kid? <laughs> you said go big, and he did. You know, look at him now. <laughs> yeah, so shout out Matt Hoffman, I guess. Yeah, so yeah that was like the, but that's like the, the one time I can actually like remember where I'm like, like holy shit, this was like such a big moment back then and i've always had that hat like in my in my room just like up on the shelf and, that's huge uh, dude that's amazing nine yeah. years old and met matt hoffman that's way cool <laughs> um let's see yeah. so now you live in cologne how long have you lived there mm, it feels like forever because i've always felt like home here um my girlfriend's like a little bit outside of the city like that's cool. where she grew up and um we moved. Did you guys live together? Yeah, we moved into this apartment about like a bit longer than two years ago. Nice. Um, and before that, I was pretty much living just out of like plastic boxes, just yeah. out of my van, either at like Nina's, her uh, parents' house. Uh, I went to see my parents every now and then while I was just like kind of like, traveling. Yeah, um, as you should be. So, yeah, and then we got this apartment like over two years ago and yeah is it expensive to live there are you in the city or uh yeah i'm in i'm in the city uh i guess it's i feel like comparing it to like i don't know other countries where like living in in cali it's like definitely cheaper 
Yeah, um, everywhere is cheaper than I mean, Cali. Everywhere is cheaper, probably, <laughs> yeah. yeah. Um, but yeah, I think there are definitely more expensive cities here in Germany, for sure. Cool. Um, so it's, it's not too bad. And we got a pretty nice place uh, that we're super happy with as well. So. That's dope. That's huge, yeah. man. I love that. I, um... Yeah, it's, it, that was like such a good feeling, just like actually having your own own place, picking clothes out of like a wardrobe. Yeah, uh, not out of boxes. <laughs> yeah, again, after a couple of years, that was cool. <laughs> yeah, and you get to put art up on the walls and shit. I like your art yeah. behind you. That's dope. Thank you. What? Who did this piece right behind you? The traditional? Is that a rose? Uh, th- no, this one. Yeah, yeah. Uh, that's from some artists from the Netherlands. I like it. Um, that's just from like a uh, use of today, um, like vinyl. Uh, that's dope. Carton thing. Let's talk about music. I know you're particular with it. And uh, you said you, you have a specific vibe you go for. What's the genre of music that you would say you like the most? Um, hardcore punk. Hardcore, hardcore punk. Sick. Yeah, hardcore. Uh, give, me, give me a couple yeah. bands to listen to. I don't know too much hardcore punk. I don't know. Force, Force, of, Force of Denial. <laughs> okay. First one. I know I've been listening, listening a lot to Strange Joy the last couple of days. The new stuff from... No option. Um, XL Life. They just uh, released an album. XL uh, Life. XL Life. They're from Cardiff, actually. Like Jordan, uh, I think knows some of them. Sick. Um, yeah. It's Cardiff Echo near Wales. Chamber, you're from Cologne. Yeah, it's in Wales. Yeah. Okay. Got gotcha. you. Yeah. They. I don't know. Like the the scene here in Germany has been really fucking good the last couple of years. Just like so many people making cool shit, doing Sick. shows. Um, yeah new bands everything yeah pretty good like every time i was home the last year like between trips i would try to squeeze in a show or two sick see some people playing yeah do you ever play music no unfortunately not just enjoy it yeah i enjoy it i just i wish i could play like a guitar like drums or something you were too busy learning how to ride bikes since you were three years old you know (laughs) (laughs) yeah pretty much is there anything else Um, that you are good at Besides bikes, like well, I'm sure there is, but uh, you know, another talent that you have. I wouldn't call any of it talent. I guess just like interests. Okay, what are you interested I, in besides being? Well, I guess it's just like, well, like photo, like shooting photos, just filming, editing, just kind of getting creative, like with like, like mixed media. Yeah. Um, I seen in uh, one of the projects you did with David. I think his name's David. David Shalom. Yeah. Um, yeah. You guys have a Super 8 or a. Yeah, I've, I've got a Super 8. That's like super fun to shoot with. And I've like, always wanted to do that. I've been filming for 17 years. I never touched one. It's, it looks so stupid. good. I yeah. just love it. And the feeling when you get it back and you don't really know like how it's going to look like. Yeah. Just, I just feel like a little kid getting it back, just getting that email, the V transfer link. I'm like, oh. <laughs> how does just, it work so you buy film somewhere online or in a yeah there's like there's like a shop i always buy it from from berlin and there's only one address all over germany that actually develops and scans the film oh wow and so that makes the whole thing just like pretty expensive yeah uh, that's like, what i've heard like two minute it's like two minute 30 it's like 15 meters of film I think, yeah. Um, it's like, in the end, about 100 euros. Shit. <laughs> uh, yeah. It Two is a lot minutes of money. for 100 bucks. That better know. be worth it, dude. So, you, yeah, you better, like, choose your, like, what you film wisely. For real. Uh, not That's just awesome. throw the money out of the window. Yeah. Which camera do you have exactly? I, I remember, so you did this clip, 360 Smith, Nose Pegs easy three yeah on a two block setup and then you celebrate and you almost knock over the camera what, uh, cam- yeah, yeah, what, what yeah, camera yeah. is that it's like a nits brown brown nitso 200 300 something like that brown nitso 200 i think so I, I know that's called like brown, brown nitso uh and i actually it's like my friend aaron's girlfriend's grandpa he gave it to her she gave it to my friend Aaron and he didn't really use it it was like 
Let me take that. Yeah. <laughs> I'm going to hold on to this for a minute, Mike. <laughs> it adds such a nice touch, and you can tell if it's real or if it's faked, I think. Yeah. yeah Some exactly. people get, like, away, get away with faking it and maybe slip one past me, but it's pretty obvious when it's uh, the organic yeah, it's like shit. A completely different feel. Like, I feel like, yeah, just like the craniness, the, the light flares and everything. It's like so hard to imitate yeah exactly um, it's like trying to imitate a vx 1000 you can't like yeah you just can't. something about the colors it, and the sun yeah exactly the softness yeah the colors oh my god that's another camera yeah. that i've never filmed with i've been on these are all 2100s or 2000s like never never filmed on a vx 1000 i don't know yeah, why I, I didn't either I, I think i never did yeah I've, I've had one for a while of a friend but the colors were all messed up and we tried everything to fix it everything was like green and pink fuck yeah um so i never really used it's just it. i'm so over filming on these old cameras man like oh. i'm finishing this video <laughs> and then i'm done mediocre two, and then that's it i'm throwing are, it. are those all uh 2100s in the back yeah yeah, yeah. <laughs> Dinosaur. and they're all dead like one got a floppy mic they're all they're, <laughs> the heads are ruined on some of them and i don't even know what's wrong with all of them but none of them work the one that works is in my camera bag and i only have one and then in my second angles, I've been just using my iPhone on a tripod. Yeah. If, yeah, that, if that totally works as well. I need to get a film cam or like a Super 8. What is the brown nitzo? Is it Super 8 or 16 that's, millimeter? That's Super Super 8. Yeah. yeah. I think I need to get um, one of those for to make, I don't know, the B-roll and give a cohesive thing. That's the cool thing about yeah. filming on an old camera is it makes everything look like it's from the same time period, even though it's filmed over the course of five years, like <laughs> yeah, the exactly. clips match each other because of the camera is yeah, just- it, it just works like good, yeah. good thing to get footage together. Just even if you can, I don't know, black and white and color switch that up, that all yeah. works together as well. What's your favorite project that you've edited? Uh, probably the last, Two ones I've put out, the one with Paul to Fracture Blue. Uh, and then Fracture Blue. That was like the last one I put out. And, yeah. Um what was the one that before was that? super fun. Uh Paul turns video part for Vans, T G in Kunstform. Um What are you saying? Like Paul Paul Turns? Paul Turns, like T H O E L E N. O L Paul T H O E L E N. Ah, oh, there it is, Paul Tolan BMX. And it's like all like black and white Super 8 uh, B-roll. Sick. Let's see, Felix, I'm gonna look it up. Yeah, that was pretty fun. Two weeks um, ago. Yeah. Damn, that's fresh. And that, and that was uh, also on the- Oh yeah, the I, love, I haven't seen so... this yet, dude. This B-roll looks dope. So <laughs> for this black and white, are you doing that in post or is the film black and white? No, the film was actually black and white. So I filmed two black and white films for that one. Uh, one of them was expired for like over 10 years. And um, so that one place that actually develops all the films doesn't do that anymore. So I found like some, some women and some lady in Berlin that had, had like her own built website that you would have to email. Uh, and then send the film to her and sh it's like super experimental it's like super hard uh, she has to keep the temperature right the whole time like you just yeah, don't know it's, it it was actually like a color film but it's only um it's only able to be developed in black and white because of the fact that it's expired yeah yeah something like that i think Trippy. there's like some chemical that's like just gone messed up whatever in there i don't know like Dude. how it exactly works but just, yeah it's like i had no idea how it's going to come out and it did like came out, out so much sick. better than i could even yeah. imagine just the four second the first four seconds of the video i'm like this looks amazing i love it <laughs> and then you're out riding and you're filming all the riding on your ag yeah that you're... was like all on the ag Oh, dude, the B-roll is so good. I love it. <laughs> Thank you. And he's nice with it. You guys are right. He did one-eighth toboggan over this rail. Yeah. All right. If yeah. you're listening, this is on Diggs' website. And it came out two two weeks ago. Go watch Paul Tolan. Tolan. How do you say it? <laughs> Paul Tolan. Tolan. What the fuck? Tolan. <laughs> <laughs>
<laughs> OE is two. All right. <clears throat> I'm learning. Yeah. What do you think is harder language, Germany or German or English? I've heard oh, people say English is harder. German. German's harder? Yeah. Why? I was so much worse in, in, in German in school than in English, honestly. Yeah. How's your German uh, grammar? Can you write an essay? Uh, um, my girlfriend always corrects pretty much everything. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> How do you say uh, you're stupid in German? Du bist dumm. Du bist dumm. Du bist dumm, yeah. Uh, uh, yeah, I feel like my grammar in English is actually better. Nice, yeah. Well, um, that's, a, that's yeah. important because like, I don't know, even for something like this, as huge of a deal as doing a little podcast is, but uh, you know what I mean? Like business, yeah, around, yeah. it's the international language, it feels totally. like. It is the international language. And yeah. even when I go somewhere and people are not able to speak English, I'm like, like this should be in school, like everywhere, everyone should learn it. Yeah. Uh, I wouldn't be mad. Yeah. I wouldn't have to learn anything new. <laughs> I did learn Spanish in high school. Then I got to go to Barcelona for like two weeks and I felt cool because I could, same, same as your trip to America, I could like understand, but I couldn't yeah. really speak. I, I, could, <laughs> I could get by, you know, I could go into a shop and order shit and say gracias and all that. It's, it's fun, cool experience. But now it's fucking That's gone because it's been oh, like too long. 15 years since I. Oh, was, yeah went there no. yeah yeah you definitely have to like be on it and yeah. i feel like if i haven't been on a trip especially after COVID. yeah um even though like dave who works with people dave Patterson, like we hang out like all the time we always speak english but not going on trips for so long hearing like different sorts of like like accents and whatever it's saying yeah. it's like kind of hard getting back into it or just like I had like there were so many words missing for me to like when you're thinking like right now if i ask you a question in in your head do you hear yourself talking and are, are you talking in english or german yeah in, no in english it's like does it switch back and forth like if you're talking to somebody german you start thinking german or uh yeah it depends on how much i spoke either of those languages before like yeah. sometimes I'm, I'm coming home from a trip uh, just get back to the airport and I'm just trying to order something somewhere and I just like start speaking in English and I'm like oh what am I doing and I just like <laughs> keep going because I'm like this seems stupid when I just like talk German now it's uh, stupid to think about man <laughs> did you know that some people don't have that inner monologue like they don't hear a voice inside their head when they think yeah Can that you was pretty, pretty crazy it's like yeah I don't know I talk to myself like all damn day yeah like, for real I can't imagine not having that inner monitor. You're just going like, all day long, you know, or yeah. you just say then, what's, yeah. And then there are people that can't see, like they can't vis visualize anything in their head either. Yeah. That's so trippy. I'm glad I got both of those. That's cool. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like, like if I told you to picture an apple right now, what kind of, do you see it in your head being 3d or a cartoon? Is it in color? Can you see light off of it? You know, it's, <laughs> yeah. it's trippy to, Trippy to think about. Our brains are powerful, man. It is, yeah. Wait, just going out filming a clip, and you know how it's gonna look like on the computer later on. Yeah, like true. how you want it to look like. Yeah, you know? exactly. Uh, there's yeah, and, and that that applies to filming too. Like, there's for each trick, there's like an optimal way to film the clip. You know. Yeah. Which, which is interesting. What's the latest trick that you added to your tool belt? Because you stay learning shit. What's the latest thing you learned? I mean, the last thing I was thinking of for so long, I filmed that one for, for freak, so I can, don't really want to talk about it. <laughs> Sick. Oh, um, that's exciting. And other than that, I feel like, like I haven't been writing too much, honestly, just kind of my body just like some kind of beat up and trying to take some time off. I think uh, you deserve a little bit of time off after 2022. <laughs> Yeah, I, I had to actually like realize that as well and be like, oh yeah, I, I think I do deserve some time off. <laughs> yeah, I, I need some time yeah. off actually. Yeah. It's like, I don't know. I fucking love it. I love writing. I love filming. Yeah. Um, but your body and your mind just like shuts down at some point and mm -hmm. you just have to give, you some, give yourself some time off. 
uh just all stuff that you're gonna learn as well i guess you did um, so much in 2022 uh yeah. how many how many parts did you put out i feel like five or six am i right honey uh, honey, honey urge was late I mean, 21 yeah, actually yeah urge, urge was like late 21 it was like december 21 we'll count that for 2022 i guess that's wait, starting when 20. did the doom video come out came out last year right i think so but i mean that was like the years before and the last chapter one, one was one year it was ago, a yeah. while ago so um honey uh the lampard that film with anton uh that came out in august i believe how do you say that lamb Lam, it's uh, noise and uh, like German word for noise. Yeah, that one was a fucking banger, dude. And it's not just a normal part; it's eight minutes long, man. And like, <laughs> yeah. and we we wanted it to be kind of like a winter and summer part. Sick, I could see um, that. So, yeah, we should talk and, about that part. Yeah, sure. Um, let's. So, for you guys watching, it might be a little shaky, but let's let's do it anyway. Um, hopefully this works. <laughs> so is this you getting tatted? Yeah, yeah this that's is my, your head the tattoo. Top of my head, yeah. yeah. Sucked. <laughs> Boom. New man. Pretty much. And then yeah, that wasn't too fun. Who's this playing the guitar? Uh, this is Anton's dad. Sick. Um, so he did the like the first song and the outro um we kind of we had like snippets from like a couple songs that we gave to him and just told him what we wanted like and um different riffs and shit yeah exactly okay. it's like that kind of style we found like a song is like kind of similar and we wanted to make something else out of it so we just gave it to him and he uh yeah he did a pretty good job i'd say like worked so good and it was like even better than we imagine it it's like a new have you seen the old animal video where they use the sound of the street drummer as the yeah. as the video soundtrack i love that yeah. shit. and so stuff yeah, like that this, I, like, cool well. I feel yeah, like it's kind of your own version of that yeah i always uh have to think about videos of rich somehow if mm -hmm. something like that comes up with like the street drumming yeah kind of thing. Rich is good about like incorporating everything that's going on. Yeah, his, like the audio on his videos are something else. It's and he doesn't even use a microphone on his camera. It's so <laughs> I was, crazy. I was so mind blown when I was uh, <laughs> when on the first trip, and he like got his camera set about, and I was like, "How the fuck do you do it? Like how yeah. how do you do it? No mic, <laughs> just just the camera, huh? Okay, yeah. <laughs> it's because he knows what he's doing. And dude, I just there's like. In Premiere Pro, there's artificial intelligence now to like make speaking sound better. So I'm sure it can make biking sound better. And yeah, it's interesting. I don't know when you have to edit out your footsteps and add in mm -hmm. your own sound. You watch that dude, um, the mountain bike guy that has videos that it's just raw sound of him going. Down. Oh, Brendan Samnuk. Yeah. Yeah. I, I was tripping so hard when those videos came out. I was like zooming in on the video. Like there's got to be a microphone on his bike. So I'm like, yeah, on the bike. Right. Yeah. No. But then I emailed the guy who made it and I was, and he was like, no, it's Foley. So they, it's all fake sounds. Like it's somebody, no somebody in post-production, like moving a ratchet wrench to make the cassette sound and then faking the what? tire, the tire noises. And it's all just in post-production. Like I was like, Damn, what? I, I didn't know that. So good. That's, That's why it sounds yeah, I... so perfect. Like I was expecting them to have like a microphone on the bike or like on the same I don't know, on the jumps, whatever. I was bugging out, dude. Wow. <laughs> I, was, I spent that's, hours that's watching that cool. video. Yeah. Would you say this is one of your favorite videos? Jesus Christ. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh, has to be one of my favorite videos. And especially that first clip was, uh, that was it's like one of my favorite clips uh, I've got for this part. Pretty great. Um, that was like one of the things where I came to the spot and I was like, uh, what did I call out? Uh, <laughs> yeah, uh, <laughs> why did I say this? <laughs> yeah. How was that? That seems like a crazy day. That's yeah, that was pretty fun. Uh, I think that was, was that? I feel like that was the day when Paul did the, like Paul did a cannonball out of it from like, he pedaled all the way across that plaza downstairs and jumped out of the slide. 
over the over rail? Over the rail with a Ken ball. Wow. And that's in the video that you just dropped two weeks ago? Yeah, exactly. Sick. I got to watch that. That's dope. But yeah, that was super fun. Some skaters did it uh, as well. It's a cool little setup. It's like in the Thresher Germany video, I think. Dope. <laughs> and that was like all like pretty early in the year super cold just rainy it was rainy like all day so we just like went to that undercover spot yeah <clears throat> that and i kind of like the that like if it's a rainy day but you really want to go ride like for us in arizona it's like basically you can go to a parking garage or some some spot like that where it's covered but there's not that many of them but i yeah, like that definitely not that many forces you yeah yeah that's one of my favorite spots in Cologne, actually. Just a back to many pet, pretty much. But yeah, it's so pretty fun. dope. And Love it's it. like good looking. It's yeah. water and all that shit. That's in Cologne? Yeah, that's in Cologne. Sick. <laughs> yeah. I don't know what was wrong with me that day. I just wanted <laughs> to get a clip. <laughs> you made it work, dude. Yeah. It's a good clip. Yes. <laughs> How was your ankle on this one? Uh, I, my, it looks like it was bad. Messed up. I yeah. believe it. it. It hurts for like, it's like at that point where it hurts for like five minutes and then it's all right. Yeah. But that one actually, like, I don't know. I felt it a couple of days. Put on some high tops. Yeah. That's so crazy, dude. How long, that, it's got to be hard. I mean, what's, what's hard for you? Like how, what? What clip in here so far it took the longest? Did that take a <laughs> while? Flat, flat rail tricks definitely take the longest. Okay. I hate flat rail clips. <laughs> Honestly, like there's like some stuff that I've spent so many hours on and just couldn't get it. Like when I, when we were still filming on tape as well, just like wasted so many tapes and yeah. And then I think the second time I went to the spot and couldn't get the clip again, I was like, I'm never gonna ride the spot again. Uh, <laughs> I on actually, that one right there uh no it was a different one what were you it's trying like can i know or is um, it a secret for freak no no that was like from like years ago it was like just like it's like two l flat rails like l here l on the other side so yeah. it was just like an over eyes to over to manual and then over packs hard way back crooks indian fucking a. <laughs> 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 understandably difficult jesus christ <laughs> i'd like to do the over ice to back over without the manual that sounds cool <laughs> over ice feel pretty good oh. oh tell me about fracture I'm, that was one of the questions that i wanted to talk about what is fracture how did it start and what's the future of fracture mm, it kind of just started i don't know like during the winter probably just us being motivated trying to film I uh, first went out like when it got like super uh, when it got dark super early just went out with a couple with a couple of friends because like Cologne has like the biggest scene in Germany yeah um, everyone's motivated to ride to film shoot photos everyone's like doing creative stuff kind of sick and um, yeah we just needed something to put stuff out over we just wanted a name for it and film videos go out with everyone and have that's a the best time your own like so, your own project why is it called yeah. fracture why yeah i don't know <laughs> we're just like we need a cool name i don't know uh it's a cool name like, it, it's it just name. worked yeah uh, i was yeah david me were just like thinking about it i guess he probably came up with it and they were like yeah let's do it let's go with it cool <laughs> who's uh, all on i just watched the fracture blue but i don't remember everybody's name shout them out who's on who's in fracture um i mean so we we put out like a full length video last year mm -hmm. um and that was pretty much with like two mixed transactions uh every like a couple full length like full parts and everything and then the last uh blue video was like adi and matas they're both not from Colm, but they're just here a lot matas Sick. is gonna move here i think um and then mario's teacher uh I, he has like a and he lives in porto part-time uh so he just like came over to lisbon for a little bit hung out with us and then it was like santo she's from Lyon. kevin was from Lyon. they were just in town so we just like met up to ride um, jota's from down there 
Um, Serato, he was the dude just like that. He came with Marios and just like shot loads of photos all week. And so we got like a little clip in in that indoor, like undercover. Like it was like a metro thing uh, Sick. together. So yeah, it was just like the little, yeah, where there's spray paint all over the walls and like a, yeah. a pillar that you go around. You did a backlash full cab. Full cab, yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah, that's, that's, a that's sick was looking actually spot, dude. Yeah. It was like it was raining all day. Uh, so we just like hung out had some coffee and then made dinner and after that we just went to that spot and rode until like 1 30 in the morning nice and i haven't had that in a while actually it felt cool just going out like no pressure just like having fun with the boys just having fun with the boys yeah yeah that's fucking awesome uh, yeah i looked at that spot sticks out because it's it's like not not too crazy of a spot but just the fact that you get to hang out there and it's still yeah exactly yeah i feel like it was it work cool having like a little extra section for it yeah it was dope all right so that's fracture yeah let's get into the biking dude <laughs> that's a pretty fun spot uh switch footed uh, max uh garrett and billy they've been riding it for probably 20 years yeah all switch footed yeah that switch footed one. again uh, yeah, that first one felt kind of awkward. Yeah. Uh, switch for the opposite full cap. Who was the first person to do the Nolly full cap? Was it you? Uh, Off I the loading guess... dock in a video five years ago? I, I The first one I did, and I think, I don't know, I feel like I don't want to be like, oh, yeah, I did, I, I did it first. I like, have a feeling it was you. I don't... Whatever, but yeah. I, I think it was me here in Cologne on that plaza, like upper ledge. Mm. I did like the... Feeble naughty hard way that day as well. Sick. Uh, I feel like Jake Seely, he was doing them pretty early as well. Yeah. I feel like after us doing them, a lot of people started doing them as well. That's uh, one. I've yeah. never been able to do a Nolly cab, let alone Nolly full cab. That's pretty wild, man. I guess like down, down stuff, the Nolly cab sometimes works a little bit better. It's like you just like, you know, you're not going to over rotate it or anything yeah you know it's like i don't know man yeah, maybe that's i put that on my list of things yeah I just learn. just like start it start doing them like off a curb down some okay. stairs, like yeah. two stair or whatever curb like, sounds like, easier than flat flat is <laughs> so fucking weird dude it's hard yeah it, it does it is pretty hard actually i don't like doing them on flat either when did you start trying to do tricks switch footed like <clears throat> And why? Because like, you can do everything with your right foot forward, but then it's a whole new ball game. Switching your other, switching uh, your feet. What influenced that? I mean, I grew up with watching a lot of Danny Hickerson as well. Um, he's iconic. Yeah, uh, and I guess it was just like one winter here in Cologne in the indoor park. I've been riding that place since the first year. I've been riding BMX. Uh, it only got rebuilt like once. In that time, they just did like did it second time, just like rebuilt the whole skate park like a couple months ago. Um, but yeah, I, I was just like kind of bored of that park. Um, so you're like, I'm like, gonna switch my feet around. Yeah, like what can I do to actually like keep having fun at this place? And nice. Just like started messing with like the feeble hardways, and I mean, obviously like Nathan, he's been doing like switch footed yep. stuff for as well, like big fucked up shit like switch footed yeah. like opposite hopping on to rares tire rides and stuff he's incredible um so yeah just like kind of taking some inspiration from a couple of people and kind of being bored of the skate park and yeah, yeah trying new things and it felt like it was it almost felt like i just learned a brand new trick yeah because it is so it's like a whole different yeah i so guess like even just bunny hopping left foot forward is totally different and weird yeah it, like me i definitely <laughs> I do that and it feels so awkward it's like re <laughs> restarting from scratch yeah it's like you're 13 and, yeah, years I, old again i found that pretty cool yeah it's like learning new like learning something from scratch pretty much that's that's, that's what it was just like yeah I'm so excited that you told me you learned the new shit for the Monster Freak video. I want to know. I'm going to ask you as soon as you stop <laughs> recording, dude. <laughs> I'm, I'm so hyped on that clip, honestly. I'm excited. Uh, dude, yeah. that video is going to be so fucked. Anyways, back to Larm. Larm. 
How long were you filming for this project? Um, the first clip we got was December 2021. Okay. Um, I think we filmed like one or two clips and then uh, I was pretty much home until like mid-March. I got surgery on my elbow uh, in like mid-December. So before that, we went out filming so much. Anton didn't have like a proper job where he like had to go to like nine to five or whatever. Um, and he was able to do like a couple of photo jobs here and there. And on the days he wasn't working, we would just go out, out like nine or 10 in the morning and just get clips done, kind full, of like plan all day. the spots out and just a full day. Um, just you and him? And then just, yeah, just both of us pretty much. I like that. I actually like going out with just with the film and not having too many people around. Me too. Um, I don't know, especially if you already have like a, the spots planned out and you're just like super focused and it's a uh, mission. You get, like, yeah, you, you know what you want, and you yeah, go get it. Yeah, yeah. Exactly. Fucking like move that. to Arizona, dude. I need more people like you around. <laughs> <laughs> Everybody, you know, like I love both where you can ride with all the homies and have a good time, but like times for me with my busy life, time is of the essence. Let's go, yeah, do yeah. And get, get clips. And know what you want and like where's the spot and what's the trick and all that yeah um I, but yeah i love both especially if i'm the one riding i i want to be just with the filmer mostly because i'm embarrassed because my shit takes forever to to land but uh yeah it's a it's a it's a good vibe going out for a mission especially yeah, if you have yeah, something definitely. in mind yeah uh, yeah i love it let's keep going with lamb <laughs> <laughs> we had no wax <laughs> Did that work? <laughs> it actually worked, yeah. Nice. And it was so cold that day. I couldn't like switch footed tooth over ice hard when eighty yeah. over and fucking ridiculous. <laughs> Thanks. Yeah. I was I wasn't able to feel my toes at some point. It was so cold that day. Wait, that over ice was switch footed and opposite. Mm, the switch the now the, no, the, hang, yeah. the hanger is opposite. The okay. ice is ice regular. is regular but switch footed. Okay. Yeah. That makes a little bit more I think sense. That that trick probably took the longest, honestly. Out of the whole video, no shit. I think so. Yeah. Yeah. Maybe. Cool. Yeah. Anton did good with this. Who is it? You guys editing it together? Uh, Anton did it mainly. Like nice. obviously, like I wanted to have a say on the music and everything. Like the second song is like of a homie from like a. Yeah, so plays like a hardcore band in where they're from, Delaware. Delaware. Uh, and he has like a little solo project, which is called Jasmine Eyes. And I just like that music, like just like the whole sound, the vibe that would like how it would work with the video. Sick. So just asked him and he was like super hyped uh, that we're going to use it. Uh, yeah. Did you, you get cleared or? Like you don't have to get it cleared if they don't have like no, a record yeah. label doing this shit. He's just like his music on uh, at this point was just on Bandcamp, mm -hmm. um, not even on like Spotify. So I just like hit him up and asked him. He's like, "Yeah, of course, fuck it." Hell it's yeah! Sick. So you spend time on Bandcamp. Yeah, yeah, definitely. That, I feel like they're like. I mean, most of the hardcore bands upload their stuff on there as well. Yeah, like, it used to be my like... life, dude. I was when I was working. <laughs> I was working for Sabrosa, and they required us to required me to clear every single song that yeah. went into any video so i was spending all my time on Bandcamp, emailing artists and like it was before i figured out what docusign is where you can sign digitally mm -hmm. and uh i would have them print out a contract sign it take a picture and send it back no to me <laughs> just to use it for a youtube video for sabroso dude uh, but i got to talk to a lot of dope artists that i was stoked yeah on. that was cool and they're usually like super yeah. Super hyped for so music. Hyped. Yeah, exactly. It's like, that's so like, dope. Of course you can. I'm like, all right, sick, cool. Yeah. Like they're getting put out there as well. Yeah. Uh just like a win win. It's a situation. huge win for them with your video, dude. Over a hundred thousand views on it, you know? <laughs> it's fire. I love this half cab. Um, what's your favorite trick to do down a big set like this? Uh I usually just like warm up with like a three. Yeah. Like, especially this one. Did you three this uh, before you half cabbed it? Yeah, I mean, there's like a pretty known um, set in Cologne. Like my friend Tom, he like knows Bonk Hot 180, the, the pillar on the side. Uh, oh, this wall? Yeah, this wall, yeah. Damn. Yeah, that was, that, 
he had a couple of flats. Um, <laughs> yeah, <that's crazy. laughs> but yeah, I think that's like the craziest clip I've seen on it so far. Um, it's been nose bonk hard 180 on that. Yeah, that's fucking awesome. Yeah, that was so good. I was hyped. Uh, I got to film that one. Sick. Um, yeah, just like loads of people have done stuff on it, and just is like is this uh, the one that Bruno like, 540? uh no like the the big wall and that's like somewhere in, in malaga i think okay i got you I it's like it's like i feel like it, it's like quite long it's like not tall yeah this one yeah yeah it's like like the first half cup i did i pretty much just like man went down the second <laughs> no uh, shit so. <laughs> <laughs> i can imagine dude going a distance with half diving is hard yeah God. and like the run-up was kind of weird as well it was like super busy you, you can't like, go straight to it and... right but like took it even longer pretty much and that then just going straight you seem to have those pretty good 540s yeah five fives are probably my favorite trick to do fives and full caps i just going fake i love how it. fives feel when i could do them yeah i i lost them like a, for a while at some point yeah, i just like kept easy to lose like super nose dive and like landed on my face once <laughs> no shit <laughs> <laughs> yeah and i didn't do them for like a year or so and then just i feel like they got that better after that's that. awesome yeah if you take a break from something you come come back fresh and then it's there and yeah it's that's dope Skirt. it's a cool transition yeah this I'm is your delaware like boy it. yeah delaware music <laughs> Oh, I wanted to tell you, dude. The, so that's sick. The fakey turn down, but the one video where you did a 180 to backwards manual to straight fakey turn down off of like a, uh, an electrical box is so fucking good. Dude. Thank you. It's just that, like that actually took a while. I, was... I believe it, dude. Choosing to do that is so sick. Like I, out of all the <laughs> tricks you could do out of the backwards manual, Thank the you. turn down is fucking choice. Yeah, I guess the the park and trails kitty will always uh, yeah be in here. So that's what. I think I can see with your writing is you can do every like that fucking awesome, dude. That's a trails trick <laughs> on the street. The only other person I see, well, I've seen that, LaShawn do one down a three block. Brett Silva's doing them a lot uh, right now. Yeah, three Brett, tables. he has He's the got best the best. Table. Yeah. Uh, there's like a clip of Garrett, three table. Yeah, down the three table set. into the curb cut. Like, yeah, Deck. Like Deck is pretty straight. good at them too. Yeah, that's a good trick, dude. Yeah. But what I was saying is you can tell you learned all the tricks and now you're like an artist just choosing what to do on where and it's fun to watch man thank you appreciate it and like most of the spots are pretty much here in cologne like Still. or just like around cologne it was just like between between trips <sighs> that spot is always pretty fun too that looks awesome shoo That's tall. That was tall. I was trying yeah. to nose bump three it and just kept eating shit. <laughs> yeah, I believe it. That's so big. <laughs> it's an interesting mix of like HD and SD clips, but it's all square. Yeah, with like the, the B roll. Yeah. Like uh, SD. Yeah. Here we got a whip line coming. I remember. Oh, that one took a while. Switch, so. switch foot, 180 down. Fucking doesn't make yeah, any sense. Switch, yeah, switch opposite. <laughs> <laughs> swap swapo swap <laughs> what's this effect is this an effect in in post it's or actually it, uh, on the camera it's in camera slow shutter speed yeah. yeah yeah it had like some like trial effects and like all sorts of effects on there cool. uh he got it like, i think pretty pretty cheap and just like started messing around with it well look at this spot dude yeah europe's got spots that's in berlin it's like a super famous uh rail yeah, it should be. It's gorgeous. Boom. That's here in Cologne as well. There's Anton. There he is, yeah. guys. <laughs> Big homie Anton. I never noticed this clip. Just people. Yeah, it's just like. And they all disappear. <laughs> Shoot. That was actually the first clip after I had surgery on my elbow. Uh, I could see the thing on your arm. Yeah. It was on and your left arm, yeah? 
yeah. the left arm and then I, I was sore for like a week couldn't do anything <laughs> shit dude that's a dream spot right there what is that a school or something it, it's like a school and what is the purpose funny, of this I, amazing skate park I, in the center of the driveway? I have That's no great. idea. I found it on some uh, skaters Instagram, like a skate German skate uh, page posted it. And yeah. the geotag was uh, geotag was Berlin. So just texted a friend of uh, from Berlin. It's like, yo, you know where that spot is? It's like, no, I've never seen it. And it bothered him so much that he didn't know the spot. <laughs> even though it's at Berlin. So he pretty much tried to like find every single sign that you could see in the back. And then he just eventually found it on Google maps. And nice. It was like pretty much in between Berlin and Cologne and Anton and me were going up to Berlin for a couple of days. And then on the way up there, we just like hit that spot up and then kept driving after. It's an incredible spot, dude. And that's awesome to have a victory where you finding <laughs> finding a spot based off of like a sign that you have to zoom enhance yeah. in the background and shit. That feels good. Not to mention it's a crazy fucking trick, dude. Thanks. Kids, yeah. Kids in the background. Thanks. Hey, there's, whose mom is this, dude? That's awesome. <laughs> <laughs> there's, there's actually Mo Nussbaumer's uh, girlfriend. Anna. Oh, no <laughs> shit. Hell yeah. yeah, Mo. I love Mo. Yeah, we, we took her uh, with us up to Berlin when they were still living up there wait is that her too with the soccer uh no that was just some random girl just handy that, cam. That's, yeah that's her <laughs> that's dope and then that that was just like some random people at the spot fuck yeah it's a vibe this oh is this the same dude uh, yeah that's nuts that's one of the clips that i like still think about full cab tail whip was how hard is that for you i mean um Smith easy. I mean, I've done <laughs> a bunch of them before, just not that fast. I ah, guess. yeah. Um, and some of them were super loose, and then I got so close to do them, like on so many of them, just like slipped my pedal, got too back heavy. And I don't know, and eventually just worked out. It's like hard to like find the right point, how you gotta be like above your bike and doing the whip yeah just, uh, i've never I'm, been able I'm to tail whip so i can't really that but that's yeah it's fucking incredible do you when you're doing whips and shit are you wearing shin pads and ankle guards no you're just raw dogging it damn yeah pretty much you got, i mean at least you got I, the high just, tops but still yeah exactly. that's pretty much all i've been wearing the past year being on vans and that's uh, smart. i don't know like I, I got like a like a park whip pretty much. I feel like when I learned them, I was riding like a gyro and yeah. learned them on like like a, on a on a fly out, just like on top of the box jump. Let's see if this looks like uh, a park whip. I feel like that helps me now with doing that kind of stuff. That's fucking incredible. It doesn't look like a park park whip. It just looks <laughs> like a perfect whip. If you could if you could have anybody's style of whips, who do you think has the best looking tail whips in the game? Ooh. I would probably when someone tail whips that always land pedals. Chase D. Um, Chase D and Fathead. Fathead. Yeah. I gotta look up some Fathead whips. Yeah, he has a really good hop whip. I would say, yeah. yeah and just then stomping would, to pedals is so good. Yeah, I would like to have a Garrett opposite whip. Yeah. <laughs> do you not you can't up a whip you can up a whip though uh barely barely i don't know uh yeah, now that you, you do every that, now and then you did a switch footed opposite one in this video but no big yeah. deal I, I okay gary yeah, doesn't better yeah he definitely doesn't better <laughs> definitely oh shit <laughs> that's a good one you could tell you're stuck yeah is it coming this uh is this the video with the unlucky hard 720 cab yeah, I think it might be after this clip. I'm not sure. This is like super famous spot in Berlin. I love the flat five in a line. Yeah, I feel like I don't know, just want yep, to do here it is. <laughs> that doesn't even look real, dude. <laughs> on on YouTube, this is the most replayed spot right here. Oh shit, you can actually uh, see that. Yeah. I didn't know. Shit. Shit, dude. Sick. Yeah, I'm I'm hyped on that one. That was like the I think that was the last now second to last clip um after I got back from X Games. 
I knew that I wanted to get the video out within like two weeks uh, with Anton. So got back and then had like that in mind and the big nose bong in the end. And I did like a fakey seven at X Games again in practice. So I felt comfortable just going there and doing it. And doing worked, it after an unlucky hard as well. Actually. Like just doing an unlucky hard is a good trick. And then to <laughs> line yourself up for a 720 cab after it. How many tries do you think it took you? And what even uh, happens? You just uh, five five cab it a couple of times and then throw in the extra rotation? Yeah, I've done like one or two, like five, one five cab, two five caps. I think the third seven cab I actually like spun. That was like the one I got. So pretty much, I don't know, maybe like the fifth attempt in total, <laughs> six. What is it? What does it feel like? <laughs> What does a 720 cab feel like? Yeah. You, you, you don't know what's really going on. You just try to spin as hard as possible. Yeah. You, you're like spinning and going up like a fucking helicopter, dude. It's true. Yeah, uh, yeah it, it feels pretty fucking cool, especially if you get that just that one. The right pop. Like, the, the right pop. The good carve. Just works somehow. It's like you're making me want to learn five cabs without pedal pressure now, but I don't know if I can change my ways. I'm too set. I'm 32, dude. I can't learn it, new things. It is super fun with pedal pressure. Yeah. I, I just wrote like someone's bike with a cassette the other day and had so much fun messing around on it. Yeah, that's how I learned full cabs was with yeah. a cassette and then engage. And then yeah. when I went to free coaster, I was like, oh, I need I need to engage. And I figured out how to like time the slack to where it just hits right on time. And yeah, exactly. That was, that was before everybody was on free coaster, so I felt I felt cool, you know. <laughs> but yeah, everything's making sense now. Like you, the, like the seven twenty cab, all the shit that you do. I didn't know you were riding since you were two years old. That's fucking nuts. <laughs> Naturally, it, it is still hard work. I'm, I feel of course, like I'm not of course. Yeah. I don't know. If the, what'd you just say? <laughs> <laughs> Hold on, I'll make you make your big screen real quick. What did you just say? <laughs> I, I, honestly i feel like i'm not that talented it's just like hard work like with a lot of shit i don't know hard work beats talent all day but you're fucking talented you're tripping <laughs> <laughs> all right let's finish her up bump switch the feet switch bar switch footed switch that, smith that to works, yeah. switch 180 all switch yeah and then massive nose bonk. Yeah, that was pretty scary, actually. Oh, I believe it. One, two, one, two, three, four, five. Big ass five block. A little celebration, bunny hop, Steve. <laughs> yeah. So dope, dude. And I thought the impact was going to be like super bad, but it was just it, like it was the, nice. the landing was like just like slightly downhill, I guess. Yeah. So, it worked out nicely. It wasn't too bad. Yeah, that, that video is fucking incredible, man. Good Thank job. You. Appreciate it. What else is next for you? Like, you got another... How many projects are in the air for you right now? Uh, you honestly, a break? yeah, it's like the first time is like early in the year and I'm not stressing about not putting the video out in like two months. Yeah. Um, I don't know. I, I just like always put way too much pressure on myself. Just because I, I don't know fucking love filming i want to progress in my writing i love the whole artistic way of editing of like filming the b-roll and then like slowly coming like seeing it come together yeah it's magical um, and, and it's, it's like a, the first it's a, time it's a crazy bond you get with the filmer too like yeah it's, yeah. A, it's magic magic happens yeah exactly <laughs> So yeah, it's like the first time in, in years that I don't feel that pressure right now. I feel like I'm a I'm just trying to learn to actually give myself some some time. Yeah. Uh, for my body. So, uh, I don't know. What does that look like? Time for your body. What are you doing? Are you doing anything to I mean, I just I try to stretch as much as possible, but I just went to see my like the doctor in Cologne. It's like skate doc Simon. He's like a skater and he knows what's up. Oh sick. so can always just like text him and then come by and i actually just uh texted some some place that does like personal training earlier like a couple hours ago nice uh because i just feel like i have like a couple i had like a couple injuries over the years 
where it can't really do much about like there's like pretty much no cartilage left just like bone on bone and it just like hurts every time i'm riding and that sucks it hasn't really felt like it used to be in a while like getting on the bike and being like oh this actually feels good like my body's not hurting and even if i took off like a couple weeks and try to like chill and do some good for my body even that didn't really help so i feel like i have to do some more stuff to build up muscles around those areas about my like around my knee around my my elbow that i got surgery on last year yeah and that's so an elbow stuff. knee oh. ankles is ankles bone on bone no but my, i had my i had like surgery on my my, my wrist like two and a half years ago uh i did like a big truck for out of line and then just like I don't know. I had like the like an external fixator in my hand for like a month. External fixator. Um, yeah, Just it's like a, that like, holds a, your shit. like a, yeah, like the metal thing from the outside. Oh shit! Uh, because like the bone from here pretty much just like crushed another like right behind it. Nah. So that was like all like, kind of complicated. Was it from a crash or landing? No, I I, I actually landed the, the truck. It was like a. I don't know it's like a 19 or 20 stair truck fuck uh, landed it. it it's like it was, it was the word uh, the last clip i got for with the with the uh, with the people out of line video okay yeah um and i had that one in my head for so long and then just came by the day before i was like tomorrow's the day i'm gonna do it called everyone up and then just went there did the truck like threw my bike away and i was like oh shit i broke my hand Fuck, um, and, and you landed it that's so funny. i landed it yeah yeah um i think i've never been that till going into the hospital actually uh, oh yeah so. all right it's right here let's we'll, we'll show the people yeah we'll show the people that sucks that you land a trick and then get hurt like, <laughs> i know it was like in time. summer as well um that's massive you can see it oh yeah it's like the left hand i feel oh. like my, my my hand wasn't uh around my bars like tight enough I, I, I do. and that's just how it happened so yeah just gotta make sure my body actually like gets back we'll never get back to the 100 but yeah getting close I, to it biking hurts and it as you get older you have to start doing some shit you know yoga yeah. strength training like yeah exactly and the high like, the, yeah the more you go get high up in the game you the more you got to take care of treat your treat your shit like a professional athlete yeah yeah exactly i just want to be riding as long as possible and just feel good on my bike and yeah. uh so yeah just finally did that step after years of saying oh yeah this this winter i'm gonna go to the gym <laughs> yeah uh, <laughs> <laughs> good for you man who so, do, yeah, you, just do you talk to any other pros you right now you talk to any other pros about like what kind of weightlifting or yoga or whatever the fuck to do like who who do you talk to about that shit good question not not too many i guess i feel like you've you've definitely like i've been seeing like all of them doing more like like riding with brock in in summer yeah I was he's like big into holy it, huh? shit like how much energy can a person have like yeah i want this too like i want to get stronger yeah <laughs> just like riding like i would be done filming just just done just couldn't get back on my bike and he was like still riding yeah it's uh, like cross like, training oh. yeah yeah. I was like, oh yeah, I want to, I want to get there. I just want to be able to ride more. Um, I yeah, and I think that's like the last step to actually like get there. Yeah. Um. So yeah, I haven't been really talking to anyone about it. Uh, just about like to my doctor, a couple of friends. Uh, my my friend Aaron, he like signed up to the gym as well because he had like uh some he had two torn ACLs uh, like in a row. Yeah. Um. So he said like trying to get like the strengths back so maybe like when i'm home we can actually go to the gym together have you ever torn an acl uh mcl when i was like 13. <laughs> that's rough man uh, do you know who um nick bonnell is yeah from here and he's i think he's had two two on both knees he tore his acl on both knees twice no he, way yeah and he's still still riding and then it just happened again like two or three weeks ago he was on an animal trip and then just on a regular you know bail off of a rail he landed on his knee wrong and you can see the footage and his knee just goes the like the wrong oh, way yeah like the just out yeah it's 
so he's out he's out now again for a while oh, and that sucks the, the dude has been riding for so long and beats that beats it every time comes back and then yeah you know, shit just happens and, it's gotta be and so it takes a while as well it's like yeah. at least half a year off the bike yeah which is so fucked like heartbreaking especially because nick yeah. his whole life is biking like he he loves it more than anybody else it's pretty wild yeah. so shout out nick if you're listening i doubt it but whatever <laughs> <laughs> it still baffles me that people listen to this shit but that's cool <laughs> um i've been enjoying all these I love it. Thanks for doing it. Um, what's 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 your what's your favorite one that we've that you've listened to? Obviously, I mean, Kranz was pretty good. Yeah, uh, I just I don't know, like hearing my friends, even though I'm I feel like I know most of it. Right. Yeah. I <laughs> uh, see. I feel like I'm always I'm bad at picking stuff like from the top of my head. I would have to look it up. Like, what uh, which one? Well, oh, like those. I've done fifty-five of them. You're fifty-six already. Yeah, it's it's like been off and on for three or four years. I started it just for fun, and I did twelve or fifteen weeks in a row, and then I chilled for a year, and then I brought it back for a little bit, brought it back again, and then Dig came in, and I was like, oh, yeah. "Let's go." Devin's was actually super good. Yeah, uh, I love Devin. Yeah, Devin's. I like the stuff he he talked about. So. Yeah. Devin yeah. and I, we got to know each other. Like I've known of him forever. Like when he was young, filming with Kyle Carlson on Vital and shit, but never really like hung out or talked. But then it was like four years ago we started playing Fortnite together, dude. Like just on the headset, shredding video games. <laughs> and I was like, Devin, what's up? And then we became we became buddies because he's fucking good at that shit. Dude. Like... He's really good at video. Oh games. really? Wild. Yeah. <laughs> he could he could compete in Fortnite. It's pretty rad. Oh damn. And it, then. It... Can you can you actually compete in that kind of stuff? Oh yeah. But I mean the competition level is so high. It's kind of like I don't know, if you entered me personally into the X games it's just like I'd get shit on. Like I couldn't keep up at all and that's kind of the variance of like what okay. the video game world is like. Like yeah. kids there's a dude, what's his name? It starts with a B, but he's the best um Fortnite player in the world and I watched behind the scenes and he's he plays 10 hours a day every day and he's young so he, like his brain elasticity is there so like <laughs> just with, in Fortnite, you're building shit and it's so complex and he's like inventing new moves and shit and really high level oh, like it looks okay. it looks impossible so and they make good I, money like pro video gamers oh yeah money. i can imagine yeah. yeah i mean that's where all the big companies Oh, it's much. wild yeah, yeah. and it, i think it's because it's accessible everybody you don't have to learn how to bunny hop to get into it yeah. you know the Just barrier to entry to bmx to is it. harder than video games for sure oh 100 yeah get your get your parents to buy a bmx bike like even that's like they started like 500 yeah euros box whatever exactly and for that and you can get like an xbox cool. and oh. <clears throat> yeah and i don't know they never know if the kid, kid is actually going to be into it or yeah It'll be like, oh yeah, this sucks after like two days. <laughs> <laughs> For real. And I don't know, I'm trying to picture like me having a kid and they want to become a pro video gamer. I'd be like supportive, but also like you got to go to the gym yeah. or get some exercise yeah, or some get, shit. Get out, of, get out of the house. <laughs> yeah. Have you ever been on a trip with uh, Justin Spreet? Uh, never been on a trip with him. No, just always see him at like contests when I'm yeah. in Cali. He also uh, plays uh, Fortnite, uh, Fortnite with us, and he is not good, uh, but he's fucking hilarious. Dude. He's always screaming. He, <laughs> he is. <laughs> he's so funny, dude. <laughs> One of my favorite humans. <laughs> Who's at? At of all that makes me wonder, like, out of all the people that you've hung out with, been on trips with, who's the most fun person that you've been around in BMX? Um, the one I enjoy traveling and being around with uh it's 100 jordan he's so fucking nice dude Love he jordan. is yeah just, just feels so comfortable around him and how's your guys' relationship do you guys, guys talk shit to each other yeah yeah, yeah. of course like, fuck yeah that's the only way to be yes i mean but we, yeah we talk about anything like and then if someone like i feel like we know if someone's not like doing right we'll just be like you good just yeah, like, yeah you're good like right away like we can yeah. we can tell when when something's off that's awesome i feel like yeah we just like clicked from the start and 
Uh, I think he been, told me, but how'd you guys first meet? It was on a trip, uh, right? Yeah, on a trip in, in France, actually. Uh, like seven, seven years ago. Nice. I think. Uh, yeah, France. And then I think the next one was just like right after was like Barcelona. Like Sick. Yeah, the classic. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> I love uh, that. Yeah, and we've been we've been pretty much traveling all year together. It was like weird if we like we didn't see each other for like a month, or one and a half. Like, yeah, I miss years. you, bro. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> so a long time to see. Oh uh, shit! Like, but yeah, it's it's I've, yeah. Jordan is my favorite person to be around within uh, like to be around uh, in, in BMX probably. I was so hyped to talk to him, dude. I'm, I'm such a big fan of both of your guys' riding, but after talking to you both, I'm like, you're even better humans than you are. Right? And <laughs> awesome. Jordan is the best, and he has no idea how fucking good he is. Yeah. Like, N- neither do you. You just said, I have no talent. <laughs> <laughs> but I don't know. It's like, I feel like he's on a different, different level with that kind of stuff. He, he'll film something that's never been done before, and then it's like, oh, this, this shit, like, I suck. I don't know. Yeah. Humble. Yeah. That's how great artists are. It's like you, everything you put out, you're like, ah, it's not that good. I could do better. And then you keep progressing and doing better. Like when you watch your old parts, do you look at them and be like, yeah, yeah that's trash. I could do better. You know? <laughs> yeah. yeah. That's, that's, yeah. that's what monster freaks going to be, dude. Oh, I'm so excited. I'm, I'm super excited. I can't wait for Rich to finally sent the, the timeline over. I'm, I'm super excited to hear the songs as well. And, uh, yeah. Yeah. It's gonna um, be good, I think. what's what's your plans for this year anything exciting besides monster freak coming out is is it gonna drop mm-hmm. this year it's gonna be dropping this year like summer probably cool we'll see no problem we'll see no problem we'll yeah 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 exactly um other than that um i don't know uh i haven't planned too much i'm going back to barcelona next week no uh, shit right back to family, them yeah my family's actually coming out for a couple of days cool my girlfriend's coming out for like a week and i'm staying another week with a bunch of friends just riding Dope. Um, that's perfect yeah and then home for a little bit trying to go to two hardcore shows in between and then porto uh for a little bit with nina again what's porto uh, portugal uh, Port- portugal yeah yeah just like yeah i'm learning the european slang <laughs> i'm gonna go to porto for a little bit you know I, it, it is actually a city a porto, oh, called porto. Yeah, porto. <laughs> somebody i remember maybe like 10 episodes ago somebody left a comment bobby you really should look at a map and <laughs> it's been in the back of my head i'm like asking where stuff is and I'm like, i should look at a map dude whatever <laughs> i'm learning man um what else do i want to know yeah. we always got to do the mount rushmore who's your mm-hmm. who's yours do you know how many people are in a Mount Rushmore have you seen the clips did you see the uh, one that you were four? in today yeah there's four yeah I saw four it I saw it earlier yeah. <laughs> I yeah. talked I talked him into keeping you on it I wonder what he was gonna say <laughs> I, know. I was like I <laughs> uh, didn't feel like he uh he wanted me to be in there <laughs> I wonder if he was gonna say because he was wearing a help hat so he might have oh, picked like Nathan Williams Nathan. yeah yeah. which is fair you know but oh definitely I got you on there dude I got your back feelings <laughs> <laughs> Uh, and it's so uh, funny how people care a lot they're like in the comments like wrong van homan needs to be in there it's like dude it's personal know. it's you know it's, personal yeah. preference there's so many dope riders it's and, impossible yeah, everyone's to pick into for. like a different kind of riding as well yeah uh, so, so what's yeah. yours like it's like all time or yeah. just like current that we can it, there's like different ones there's one at nobody's answered this one yet but uh mount rushmore of riders that are good but you hate watching <laughs> we did that drunk at the bar once so that was really fun <laughs> yeah i can't do that yeah i know <laughs> <laughs> but you have one you know it. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> all right let's just do um, current okay. current 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 yeah uh first of all deck i've got so much respect for deck the work he's been putting in for so long every single video part is like something fresh he always has like the sickest idea for the spot yeah um like such a powerful ride as well yeah um sick dude very sick dude uh, so nice um, so humble but so hard working yeah it's, it's fucking awesome 
So yeah, I, I got a lot of respect for Dak. So Dak is definitely up there. Like that's his video parts are one of the most much watched uh, ones for sure. Oh fuck! Why isn't he in Freak? Because it's a Europe thing. Uh no, he's uh, not a monster anymore. Oh yeah, he's, he left monster. Yeah. Okay, yeah. gone. Um. And then I would just like keep it current, I guess. Like Brock, I think. Yep, he deserves it. All his video parts are so good. Really like Brock as a human as well. Yeah. Um I think his last video part is like my most watched video of last year, honestly. Nice. Sick. Um I feel like Egan. Yeah. He's like one of my favorite writers as well. He's super influential. Style yeah. too. Like clothing wise. Everybody started dressing I, like Brandon Vegan, dude. Yeah, pretty yeah. much. Yeah. Yeah. Like super creative rod as well. Has like his all his uh whole own style. And yeah. Always like the shit he's been doing. Um last one. Last one. Fuck. I mean, there's so many people out there that do cool shit. Really? They're so good and Big Jordan fanboy. Hell yeah. <laughs> Jordan Godwin. There's, there's honestly no person out there that rides a handrail better than Jordan. For real. He can do so, everything. Uh, I wish I would have like just like this, like the tiniest bit of that ton of riding rails that he yeah. has. Why do you so, think it is? Is it because his local spots were all just down rails? Like, why is he so comfortable? Yeah, I guess just like the stuff rails. he grew up with. And then he just like rides that flat bar at the um, ramp world all the time. Yeah. Um, yeah, I don't know. I guess it's just like how you grow up with like what you actually like what you're riding. And I feel like I've just been like grew up riding ramps a lot. So a lot of jumping, whatever, going fakie. Yeah. Pretty trails. Just like been completely like influenced differently for real yeah that's good your your writing is really really balanced it's cool and the tricks like it doesn't feel like there's too much of one trick in a video you do a good job of like creating something that's like uh i don't know balanced is the right word for yeah, th it, you know thank you yeah I've, i struggle with that sometimes so especially with like rail stuff grind stuff I feel like I'm not that comfortable, like especially rails. I hate riding rails. They're scary like, as fuck, dude. They're <laughs> so scary to, to ride, and I always have to force myself. I'm like, okay, yeah. I need a rail club. You ever <laughs> sacked it? At, at this point, you have to have sacked the rail, right? Yeah, maybe like once, honestly. Yeah. But I've I've never like crashed super bad on a rail either. I don't know, like. Nice, good. Keep it that where way. That's from. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I compound fractured my tailbone on a on a flat rail. Oh my! Missing God. my peg on an ice pick, and I just sat on it. And then I spent the night in the hospital. And dude, so I'm in the hospital room. And uh, all right. So first, I hit, I do the shit, and then the photographer is like, "Get up, pussy. You're fine." And I'm like, "I don't think I'm fine." I started to try and drive, and I was like, "I can't drive." So. He drove me home. I'm sitting in the passenger seat with my ass up, like in the air, like I yeah. just can't too much pain. I walk in, I like hobble past my dad. He's like, what'd you do? And I was like, oh, nothing. It's fine. And then I go look in the bathroom and there's blood all, going all the way down my leg. And I was like, dad, my ass is bleeding. And he's, he's like, it's probably just hemorrhoids. Plug it up. So then I'm laying there and I was like, this can't be hemorrhoids. Take me to the doctor. And then uh, the doctor has me like just spreads open my ass he's like damn you tore yourself a new one he like calls in a girl nurse from the hallway you got to take a look at this and look at and like I, he's like you compound fractured your tailbone we got to do surgery overnight so i had surgery and this is like right when i got sponsored by gt i was 18 years old and fucking never oh, like never looked at rails the out. same dude yeah <laughs> i was like yeah, i'm I cool on rails. <laughs> yeah the, the tailbone is the worst yeah. I mean, I've, I've never had it that bad, but I feel like I have fractured it before. It's the worst. That's because it, it is you the use worst it for pain everything, for so long dude. as well. Yeah. yeah. Sitting, standing, walking, it's it's involved in everything. We take for granted everything, like even just a little shit, like, I don't know, your thumb or a toe. It's like, holy shit, I didn't realize I used my toe this much, you know? Yeah. It's yeah, wild. totally. Um, what else is there? <laughs> What's the other questions? What are they? Oh, let's go to Instagram. Yeah. 
they they should be probably yeah. good ones. Let's see. How big? Okay, I actually hit up Grant to see uh, to see if he's got some questions for you. So Grant Castelluzzo, <laughs> this is the Grant Castelluzzo section. Uh, Grant says, being a top pro, most dudes wouldn't be trying to film as much as you do. What's the motivation? And what's we talked about fracture in general, but what's yeah. what what's your motivation? Wait, like yeah, me to filming keep, other yeah. people? No, you just filming. No, just like me filming be trying yeah just you filming in general yeah what is the motivation i think just like seeing the end product actually feeling like you've kind of achieved something you have something that you like put hard work into and then if i'm like filming with like antonio david i'm like super hands-on or I've, I've edited my my own videos before yeah uh, i feel like I just love that whole process of slowly getting a clip, like a couple of clips, coming home, putting them in a timeline, filming some B-roll and just like making everything work together. Um, knowing that you want to do a certain trick on a certain spot and yeah. just like imagine it, how it's going to look like on the computer after. And yeah, just like the whole process, I just love it either filming other people or even just like going out and filming with someone like my, my own writing. Right. Yeah. Um, so That's yeah, a good answer. Like the whole process. Yeah. Me too, man. Especially when I was like in the thick of it, I was yeah. obsessed with it. Like come home, capture the tapes immediately, put it in the timeline and then start That's messing the around with a song and maybe feeling like, yeah, there's, there's that some, how do you edit when you do, do you like, uh, do you lay everything out in a timeline and then drop a song in, or you drop the song first and then put the tricks where they belong? I usually can't wait to have all the clips and then pick a song or whatever. So, yeah. for example, with the blue, the fracture blue video, mm -hmm. um, before everyone else came, I got a couple of clips with like uh, Santos and Kevin who were already there. Uh, I filmed some B roll on the days. Uh, I was just like, out with my girlfriend um so i had a little bit of footage laying around and then i had that song in mind for a while that i actually wanted to use that's where that blue thing comes from like the blue 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 oh okay um yeah and then i actually cut the song because like the lyrics were kind of weird um so i didn't like the rest of the song so i had like a vision for the whole video and then every time we would come home from a day of writing i would sit down right away and put the clips in and i have i have like a like a spotify uh like a playlist like a folder for videos like songs i want to use nice and i just like went through it i had like one like the like title fight of just listening about title fight and i was like i want to use the song uh actually uh Cran told me the other day uh that he used that song when i was about 12 for like Lincoln's <laughs> video uh, <laughs> um so uh yeah and then just like every time we came home from riding i just sat down and put every clip in the timeline and what i really do is that i actually use the clips the um like how we filmed them like in order yeah, yeah in order yeah nice yeah that's interesting um, yeah that's cool. i don't know i don't know why but I've, i kind of i feel like that feels more natural and and then obviously to the to, towards the end i try to like kind of like get a bit more attention for yeah the banger. for yeah. real i still i remember like my favorite one of my favorite feelings in the world is like after i pick the song and then there's like a certain drop or a, like the most important part of the song where it like hits like timing that to land mm -hmm. for the best trick or whatever and the in the middle of it everything can be kind of moved around but what i cared most about was like the first clip has to be a banger the last clip has to be a banger sometimes the first clips are more important more important than the last clip yeah so and, the people actually keep watching and yeah and then in the I'm middle sure if there's a song it, yeah. change or some drop yeah. that, like i love a dynamic song where it's like not just the same mm -hmm. thing throughout and something something drops and then you know the vibe yeah, the vibe yeah i love that as well and That's, i love like adding like intros outros just like 
middle sequences just like yeah um, that's stuff. Fun, just like around the routing what what do you think is your favorite uh full-length bmx video as far as like editing and filming goes holy shit hmm that's hard i always i i'm a big tony Anna's fan yeah me too uh, i mean who's not right like, and and search deadline yeah deadline like all the fiending videos like the yeah. fiending still fiending yep he has his very, those, very that, those are style. pretty much full-length videos right like yeah just like that kind of style those are just i mean already i think right. they're gonna drop one in a couple months yeah i've heard about that as well just waiting for it yeah that's just, that's just rumors i don't know anything confirmed sorry Tom. <laughs> tony's not fucking listening anyway right. um yeah I, I i don't think i can actually be like uh this is like my favorite full-length video fuck it um ask him about not drinking anymore grant says how long have you been <laughs> how long have you been not drinking are you not drinking uh three years this month wow uh, good for you yeah that's that commitment was, yeah definitely uh but i don't know, feel like that was that was something I wanted to, like, where I want to be. Uh, like, I knew that for a while. I was kind of, like, just, like, struggling with giving up drinking. I mean, it's, like, BMX, you know, you know how it works. Like it's part of the game. You, yeah, you know, like, you think it's a part of, it's part of the game, even though I've, I don't know, it started, like, kind, kind of late. Uh, and then I had a couple of years was where everything was a bit too much. I yeah. just got, like... It's pretty easy to get like out trunk and yeah. um like pretty constantly and i had like a couple of mental uh issues that just got worse over the time and like so i was like trying to uh like panic attacks and it was just like anxiety uh that kind of stuff yeah um especially uh, like drinking not knowing what really went uh, went, uh, went on the night before and then worrying about it for like weeks like yeah just having like that that fear the whole time like what did i do wrong and like yeah, i couldn't dude, remember that is the what worst. i actually did and like all that kind of stuff yeah. and uh i remember checking my instagram story the next day after a oh. night of drinking and being like no fuck. yeah delete delete, delete. <laughs> yeah delete delete, delete delete um yeah uh yeah i guess yeah i went a bit deeper i guess um where to a point I, I used to like have like crazy dreams as a kid and be like sleepwalking and everything shit um and that kind of came back with drinking um when i was like pretty drunk i was like knew that i had like some sort of like panic attack while dreaming shit. and i would just like start wandering around the house just like being super anxious didn't know what was going on then i would just like slowly get back to myself and realize what is going on yeah and that's why i kind of had that happening like being far away from home like being in china and then waking up like getting like in cautious again and having my mom on my phone and and i was like fuck i can't do this to to myself i can't do this to the people around me uh like people actually like worried about me yeah um like i have to like slow down and at that point i got more into like the whole like uh straight edge uh side of hardcore and everything Sick. which like helped me just like get out of that and um like just like started drinking less and less and nice um, and then I, I was at a point where even like two beers would like freak me out like what Shit. Did i do like because i like, kind of losing the control yeah uh yeah and then at some point I, I was finally at that point was like okay fuck this i'm so over it i want to get better i want to get better mentally i want to get better physically yeah um so yeah just uh good for you I actually yeah it was like okay and you're right you said again you said earlier like if you do something you go all in so if you're not drinking you're not drinking you know yeah yeah exactly and good i feel like you. yeah i feel like it's got to be that way and it's, it was one of the best decisions ever honestly it's easy uh, to go on like, that route have it be a slippery slope of just you know i'll have one beer you know like and then all of a sudden two weeks later you're having six beers every night type shit 
yeah exactly especially on trips like yeah like being super young being on those trips um that's like what you think bmx is like traveling partying yeah and like doing stupid shit with your friends um and then you still got to film a video like companies yeah, are the most important part go yeah. there yeah and you're just a drunk piece of shit <laughs> like hung over the next day yeah not being able like to do what you like what you're actually there for right like what you're getting paid for why like why you're actually doing all of this yeah Dude, you know who was really good at partying and then still getting clips is Kyle Hart and LaShawn. Those two. I can't imagine. Yeah. Those two would fucking party. And then the next day, like business as usual. It was as if they were sober the next day. But me, I'm like, I would drink a bottle of wine at the uh, at night, uh, editing the footage from the day. And then I'd wake up and I'd be too hungover to want to film. And then these guys are doing bangers on their bikes. And I'm just like, you guys are fucking incredible. Like I couldn't bunny hop my bike hungover right now. <laughs> That's good. Good yeah. for you for three years. Three years straight edge. Yeah, I'm, I'm hype. How big of a pain in this is from Grant again? How big of a pain in the ass was it to five cab the Korean friendship bell wall or bell? <laughs> yeah, yeah, the, like the yeah the bell tower thing. Yeah. Um, we went there like seven times over two trips. Wow, that's a pain in the uh, ass. Like the the year before when I was there filming for the Ecla World of Uncertainty video. Yeah, we went there two times probably three times uh with and it the was five cab in mind with the five cab in mind yeah okay. like Dill and like half cap whipped it and i've been wanting to film like a five cap over something with like a little drop to yeah. it and that was like perfect the spot looks super good as well it's yeah like a, um, it's a damn good clip on the ocean and yeah and but it's like always so windy up there so we just kept going there standing there and i'm like nope it's not gonna work nope <laughs> yeah like you won't be able to like ride a straight line with that wind so that was happening pretty much like six times and the seventh time we went there like and i feel like when you're like down to long beach you can never tell like how windy it's gonna it's gonna be up there yeah uh and then yeah seventh time i think went up there in the morning uh it was slowly getting getting windier and then just like started like doing it like right away pretty much oh yeah uh, yeah worked quite quite fast i'm pretty happy on that clip that's a damn good clip dude and yeah, oh. felt good finally getting the clip after like pretty much one and a half two years like of just like going back there and, yeah uh yeah holy and shit drove all the way across like la to pasadena for that last clip oh shit that's a lot yeah, yeah. oh the last clip is a uh, 180 right no, yeah, you yeah the 180 over that yeah, rail. Yeah. Like I, I did like a, just like a straight hop like years ago. Yeah, I saw that clip today when I was watching. Yeah, that shit. Pathfinder video. Yeah, and I w- I haven't been there since, so I couldn't re- like really remember how the spot was. I knew yeah. there there was like some skater who he did something over it. I can't remember what it was. I think like his name's Sean Dilo. Um. So I like watched that video a bunch of times, just like trying to figure out again, like how big that spot is. And then yeah. like, fuck it, let's go there. And Grand is like always down to like try yeah. an hour and a half or two just to get one single clip. Yeah. Um, I, I love that about filming them being out there. and uh, He loves it, dude. You can tell. Yeah. Even just talking to him, you're like, you fucking love this shit, dude. <laughs> yeah. Um, we got a lot of we got a lot of Instagram questions. Let's bang them out. <clears throat> okay. The real Ya yeah Bob from Florida says, "Fave trick or tricks to do, and something you learned or been wanting to learn." Well, we covered the fact that you learned something, but it's a secret, so we got to wait. <laughs> but what is your favorite trick to do? Favorite trick to do is honestly everything fakey, probably full caps, just like nice. a tucked full cap. Yeah, I like that. Um, and five forties. Yeah, I'm with turn down. downs. Turn downs are pretty fun as well. I never could do it. Um, I I bet it feels good. Me, I'm I do a bow legged bar turn. That's that's my turn down. <laughs> right. I was actually uh, someone was asking me the other day. Like they were trying to learn them as well. It's like, oh, it's all in the feet, kind of. It's like pushing the bike like forward, and I don't know. Interesting. I never thought about it being all in the feet, 
but the same thing for me with tables like i'll do the bike move but my my knees are just mm -hmm. out out bow legged oh uh, yeah no, yeah you gotta tuck and fold yeah, them that's, over. that's that's in the in the foot as well like you gotta like yeah it's interesting I brett i just gotta study brett silva's videos oh yeah yeah all right johan marais favorite video part that wasn't by him or featuring him hmm so your favorite video part of somebody else. Mm -mm -mm. Let me see my uh, YouTube. Probably Brock. History. Probably Brock. Yeah, that's honestly like over the last year, that was my favorite video part that came out. Um, yeah, Boom. I would say so. Yeah. Answered. All right, Fetchy Marin. Fetchy. Sorry, I don't know how to say your name, homie. He says punk, hardcore music message and aesthetics influenced his writing and overall lifestyle question mark i'm gonna go ahead and answer that for you dude yes <laughs> <laughs> francis castro says least favorite tattoo <laughs> least favorite tattoo uh probably uh, i got like a piece of pizza <laughs> on my leg <laughs> that i did with my friend aaron says so like homies Fuck yeah. <laughs> uh, it's like a couple of years old. I, I think I'm just going to get a blast over it. Yeah. Um, like That's the cool yeah. thing about tattoos. You can get them blasted over. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> uh, I can answer this one for you. Rusty Palm says, why are you so good at biking? Well, because he's been doing it since he was two and he's obsessed with learning new shit. And <laughs> yeah, pretty that's much, that's it. And he hangs out with Jordan Godwin. All right. <laughs> uh, Glock 17. This is frame size currently? Uh, 21 top tube. What about the chain stay? Chain stay, we went a bit longer again. Nice. We're, so it's not a scooter. I think we're about like around 13, 13 to 13, four. Cool. So I yeah, like went a bit, bit longer again. I feel like I just wanted my bike a little bit more stable since my front end is like super short and steep. Yeah. Right? Yeah. I, I want to try your bike, dude. That sounds fun. Like funny. Maybe I. Yeah. Maybe I could do a 720 cab. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> it's, it's not. It's not in the body. It's in the bike. If yeah, you it's, it's bike, in the bike. That's the secret. Yeah. <laughs> just, just, just the geometry. Uh, if only, dude. All right, Jeffrey Lapointe. Are you in the gym at all and taking healthy eating seriously? You're the man, Felix. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I mean, not in the gym yet. Uh, hopefully gonna, soon. You, you just texted a personal trainer today. Yeah. Exactly. Oh. Trying to oh. eat as healthy as possible. Like. All vegan. That's, that's smart. Uh, yeah. Follow his lead. You're vegan? Is that what you said? Yeah. yeah. V vegan, straight edge, hardcore? Vegan, straight edge, hardcore. <laughs> Sick. Why, why are you vegan? Um, animal cruelty. That's like how it goes. No, no, no. I'm just no. kidding. <laughs> I, went, I went vegetarian when I first crazy. learned about factory farming. I was like, fuck that. That's so fucked. Like, it is fucked. Like, yeah. I feel like you just like grow up with like your eyes closed, like you don't know any of it. Yeah. And as soon as you start looking into it, like holy fuck. Yeah. And I just didn't want to be a part of that society that supports it. I guess just like I don't know, I wouldn't be able to kill any sort of animal myself. Yeah. So why would I pay someone to do that for me? Have you? But like then everything that's a vegetable, they're clearing out tons of wildlife to. Like they're killing a bunch of shit that lives on the ground and clearing out fields. It's like there's no harm free way to eat anything. Like Yeah, I guess. But that's die. like still like the best. It's a it's a it's a lesser of two evils. Yeah. Yeah. Unless definitely. you're like if you had your own farm with your own cows that you raised <laughs> yeah. well and chickens and shit, that's the most ideal thing. But yeah, there's no animals gotta die, you know? We gotta we gotta eat. All right, Sam, yeah. let's see. Yeah. <laughs> no, i'm not too sure about that <laughs> <laughs> sam jong un says tips to progress tips to progress faster do you have any have tips fun. to progress faster that's a good answer have fun yeah have fun while you're doing it none of it just comes naturally i guess um bobby says favorite frame you had growing up riding um i guess like the one that stands out for me is um when i was 10 i spent all my like my the money i got for my birthdays whatever on a custom-made aluminium frame 
Sick. my 18 inch bike nice uh from like uh yeah he's like a legendary mountain bike frame welder cool and um he made me a custom aluminium frame because we're That's trying right. to like make, make my bike as light as possible so i was just like tiny had no yeah energy so um yeah uh, custom dude i love that custom aluminium frame. it was like super low as well just Sick. like like what everyone wrote back then i guess yeah uh, I didn't have my my seat uh, zip tied on my frame, but it was pretty low. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Fuck, that was a trend, huh? Yeah, this, this unbelievably slam, slammed seat. Who yeah. rode like that? Who had that frame? Who's probably the most famous dude with like the lowest ass frame? Is it Max? No. Um, I there's, there's one no, dude in particular that I'm trying to think of, but I can't remember. But he did a bunch of whips. One, there's always one um, German dude coming up to my mind like he he was pretty influential in my writing as well back then and he had like the best uh best like three to fake his best inverts and whatever yeah it sounds uh, like the same uh, person um per- perry peter miller <laughs> what's his name perry peter miller he was on nike as well perry peter P- almost yeah <laughs> <laughs> did you ever watch tobias vicka vicky yeah, of course yeah, yeah he's a fucking legend yes uh, you ever meet him yeah sick jealous yeah. he's one of the ones when i like he was a legend when i just started like 17 years ago which is crazy to think about but yeah he, he was doing some like even like like street stuff like, yeah he was grinding like the biggest handrails being tail whips out of them and whatever like super early he was sick yeah all right my, my boy archie kenward is uh he edits for me have you ever met him archie uh, I think I've never met him, but I know he is, and I know what he does, and I yeah, like uh, what he does. Love that guy. He, uh, I don't know if, yeah, it doesn't matter. He just told me that he was in, he was in Taiwan, and he rode some, like, gold statue thing, and okay. the Taiwanese news picked it up and filmed the black tire marks, and then the police were apparently looking for him while he was in Taiwan, and his no whole crew, way. and I was really nervous for him, and I was like, did you make it to the airport? Are you, like, did you get out? And he's like, I got out. And I'm like, holy shit, dude, it's oh so crazy. <laughs> Sorry if that I get you in trouble, bro. <laughs> <laughs> I did, he says, what is Mount Rushmore? Which is funny to ask, actually. Do you know what Mount Rushmore is? Uh, I know what it is. I okay. couldn't really explain it from the top of my head now i i know what it is i know the faces and everything okay and, i don't even think i can name who's on it in uh, actuality sorry. george washington uh lincoln lincoln yeah Abraham lincoln I yeah I, uh, I should probably know who's who's actually on mount rushmore but i don't <laughs> <laughs> ah stefan atencio says fave moment okay. in your bmx career at the moment yeah what's stefan like i see him he looks He's, fun he's the nicest human being you'll ever meet Hell honestly yeah. he's so cool. cool uh we've been hanging out a little bit uh when we were like but well, he was showing us around barcelona like yeah. last year last week i'm gonna stay with him for two nights next week i got my my bike and my bike bag and everything at his house right now nice um, what was that he did a three or a truck off the big ass thing at the ledge he trucked it that's yeah, so the, fun the big, they all yeah. call it the big spliff yeah, uh, the big spliff, dude. That's yeah, so nice. Yeah, he trucked off it. Uh, yeah, he's he's the nicest human being ever. He's super cool. Got so he's much a savage. As well. The Manny Whip in particular from his last part on a rail was so sick. I think he just yeah. posted it on Instagram. But anyways, yeah, on, on that on that L uh, rail. Yeah, yeah. We we just went there the other day and I was like, holy shit, this is actually insane. Like it's like cracked as well. It's like super wobbly in the front. That's pretty amazing, uh, dude. Yeah, he he's been putting in work and yeah, no, he's he's cool. He says, um, favorite moment in your BMX career. Um, first of all, getting, uh, like, getting paid for riding. Like, being like, yeah. yo, you want to, like, do this? Yeah. Uh, <laughs> I'd say that's a pretty good moment. <clears throat> like, realizing that is actually a thing. Uh, I feel like for some fucking like super cool metal pack riders i'm sorry uh so that might sound like a little cheesy and everything nah, and fuck that. Not, or not not core enough um but yeah 
um that that's like one of the moments for sure and then like the Nora cups yeah for sure that's like yeah. the, especially the first one i was hyped to first see you in one, that. And then, i mean cool. all of them all of them was like it's insane it kind of it's like overwhelming i believe um, it especially knowing like that the scene voted for it like yeah the, the biggest names that i've always looked up to yeah whole life. it's gotta feel good um, That's gotta feel yeah good. it's it's always like still pretty sane looking at them <laughs> yeah <laughs> you got them <laughs> all right mr fab says biggest musical influence and how did you start listening to them that's an interesting question with mm. with your ears <clears throat> <laughs> yeah surprise <laughs> uh, uh i don't know i feel like like hardcore i kind of got off track for a couple of years kind of just listen to what other people thought was cool and i thought i had to do that as well yeah gotta fit <laughs> uh, in. my yeah exactly uh, my older cousin he was into hardcore when i was about like eight nine ten that age when i i don't know he was wearing band merch it was like when he had something that was someone had an x on his hand i was like oh what is this straight edge. It's like just like kind of getting like interested in all that i mean i had like those like all like mp3 players with the usb that you would just like put into your computer and then yeah you like all this music on there sick what does uh, that x on the hand mean is that for from going to a show or does that mean straight edge it's like from people that were underage when you go into yeah club. okay that's what i was so thinking they yeah. would just get the x and then they just started doing it because they because they don't drink nice so. yeah so it, it's the same same thing it's both it's it's yeah. being underage but also just to represent that you don't drink okay so. yeah exactly um yeah so he just like put all his music on my ipod whatever like then uh so i was listening to that kind of stuff pretty early i didn't really know what that all was called and what that world looks like and yeah. i kind of got off track until i was like 16 17 probably okay and then like fully back into it especially the last couple of years and just kind of just like i know uh pushed me in so many positive ways sick i love that it's interesting to me because i feel like your favorite genre that hardcore punk like emo is making such a huge comeback right now like it, it, it felt like it, it died in 2009 and then now it's yeah, back. i mean it, yeah it was like, always rappers are doing it now too it's weird yeah it, yeah. it is weird it, it was always there but i feel like especially now after covid everyone yeah. is so hyped to go to shows people yeah. have to play music everyone just like wrote music so it's like yeah. so cool seeing like all that like thrive and god i'm glad covid's over dude yeah. that lock, <laughs> yeah. lockdown shit was no fun definitely not nope mr fab has another question what drew you to shoot analog photography do you know this guy mr fab it's a fab. I don't it's know. Fab. Whatever. What drew you to shoot analog photography? What is analog photography? Just film? Yeah, just film. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Um, because it looks cool. That's why. It, it looks <laughs> cool. I don't know. I got like I guess I got like an old camera with my dad and um, my first girlfriend. She was she into. Had, she was into it. She had one. I kind of like ripped it off her. <laughs> <laughs> she like she she gave it to me at the end, like yeah. a, like a little point and shoot. That's where it all started. That's sick. And bought like a little Olympus point and shoot, and that's still been going for like seven or eight years now. Hell yeah, um, that's fun. And yeah, there's something and then, yeah. tangible about it. Like shooting on film is cooler than just taking a picture with your phone because yeah, and it's like you can hold it. Yeah, it's, it's like kind of with the Super 8 thing. You just don't really know how it's going to look like. You yeah. don't know like how the end result is going to be. Have you done the shit where they... Because like on cameras back in the day, you would have to bring a light meter and like sh sh read the light meter and then change your camera settings based on that shit. Did you ever do that? I guess I'm not that... I never did it either. Nerdy. Yeah. yeah. Um, <laughs> <laughs> just point and shoot. That's it. Yeah, yeah pretty much mostly. I have like a, a, some other ones, like some more manual uh cameras but yeah it's like and it's like good to bring on trips as well yeah um I, i've just started shooting more on a digital one because film just got so expensive over the last years yeah big time um 
So yeah. this, there's this camera I just saw Fuji come out with. It's like expensive as fuck, but it looks like, looks foam. like foam. Yeah. yeah. They, they got a couple of good ones. I, yeah. I almost got one the other week and I was like, oh, do I really want to spend this money? Yeah. It's like $2,000 uh, for a point and shoot. I'm like, all right, yeah. maybe. Uh, let's see. One more from Mr. Fab. He says, biggest cinematic influences. <laughs> cinematic influences. Cinematic. You think he as well thinks about like filming just like people like I don't know. I, I don't know. Movies? Do you like watching movies? I'm not not the biggest um movie person, honestly. I don't know. I like I'm if I'm watching a movie that has to be like a romantic love movie, honestly, with a happy end. Nice. <laughs> I'm, a, I'm a big softie. Here, rom com bro. <laughs> yeah. Um, um, oh, that's funny. Uh, yeah, I don't know. <laughs> There's a movie that is not that at all that I would tell you to watch, but you probably hate it. It's called The Lobster. It's got Colin Farrell in it. It is so fucking weird, man. I know what that is. <laughs> uh, it, I'll send it to you maybe when we're when okay. We're yeah. Um, let's see. Da, 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 da. Let me just make sure I'm not missing anything for work right now. All right. Um. All right. Let's see. Hold on one second. <clears throat> Finishing podcast. Get out of here. We got a hell of more questions. Let's go. Uh, <laughs> Killian MLT says, next tattoo, where? Uh, next tattoo. Um, either the blast over, honestly, on my leg and probably something on my arm because I Tight. just want to get a blast over. I just like the look of it. Yeah. Boom. Uh, just like a second layer. Um, and probably other side of my, like, my forehead up here. Uh, so, wait, show me again. Like I got this side done. Okay, I'll yeah. Get the other one done. Okay, there you go. That's dope. Uh, Dylan Ashlock says, "Did he watch Misery? Did you watch that? They sent it to me too." Dylan, I'm sorry. I have not yet. I have not either. <laughs> I sorry, have Dylan. no. I have no DVD player. Yeah, nobody like does, it. man. Send um, us the send us the digital download, Dylan. I'm I'm so sorry. <laughs> I'm also sorry. But you know who did watch it is uh, Scott Marceau, and he said it's nice. So I gotta watch and it. If if Scott says that, it has to be nice. Yeah. All right, and then another question from Dylan is Pegs Hard Seven. When's it happening? <laughs> That's probably one of the most asked questions uh, <laughs> to either Jordan, Dan, or myself. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> is it physically possible? It is. Yeah. Has, have you seen yeah. it? Somebody come close? Uh, Jordan at the skate park, I guess. 540 and a half or something? Um, 540 tail yeah. tap? Or 720 tail tap? Yeah, kind of like a, like a slider thing, yeah. uh, but it's definitely possible. It's just like so much effort. So much effort. <laughs> yeah, dude, I'm tired just thinking about it. <laughs> and it's not even going to look good. Yeah. <laughs> you know, it's like... Yeah. You too much man. See that? i don't know i mean it is possible but i don't know jonah jachan uh you know him he he does some shit for sabrosa he films with matt ray he's from florida um he oh, says what's an american city you want to film in that you have yet to i've never been to new york actually nice uh, I've, I've, i'm always just going to long beach <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> always staying with crammed uh, i've been to minneapolis uh, Sick. Twice. that's it for x games so but, California and Minneapolis is where you've been. You yeah, got a lot of cities much. to go to. So, yeah, there's a lot of a lot of on, uh, I'm, a lot on the list. I Philly, might maybe. be might be go. Oh yeah, Philly would be sick too. I might be going to New York on April sixth. So come on out. I'll film you. Um, we'll see. Uh, yeah, we'll see. <laughs> <laughs> might be a tight one. Martelaine Evo, 2023 biking versus old school BMX. What is That's 2023 biking? I don't know the current state of things versus how it used to be. He must be nostalgic. <clears throat> yeah, I don't know. Just I do whatever. Know. Yeah, do. doesn't matter. Kyle Vandalin says, uh, "Then, yeah, Kyle Vandalin, longest battle for a trick or line." Uh um, the longest battle, probably my Pax nose whip from my monster video. 
I have that written down right here. I was going to ask you about that. Yeah. That took so long. (laughs) And it's like a trick that needs so much energy as well. Yeah. Going fast. Just like going fast up the ledge, the whip. And it took like, like it didn't even take that long compared to what some people put in for like some technical stuff, but just like the energy. I had no more energy. I, I would, I would keep going if I could, but there was like no way yeah. I could have done one more try. Yeah. Uh, it was like probably three, three and a half hours Fuck. going up that ledge. No, and then just like, going around like, in a circle over and over again. Fuck. Yeah. And like within the five, first five tries, I got like super close to it and then just like completely lost it for a while. That's the worst because you know you can do it. You're yeah. Like, where, where did it go? Yeah. <laughs> where did it go? How did it and feel then, when you landed it? It was so good. It was just so freeing. I don't know. Just like, but I landed and my body just like started cramping up. Oh, shit. Like, <laughs> I feel like everything just could feel the release uh, that I actually got it. Yeah. Um, that's fucking awesome. Yeah. No, that, that was good. Uh, Eddie Queller says, When is the face tattoo coming? We, <laughs> we covered yeah. that. Yeah, yeah. It's not, it's not going to be straight in my face there's no way uh brian queasy says what's going to be the new piercing people care a lot about your tattoos and piercings dude <laughs> <laughs> i guess is there a new uh, piercing coming no i don't think so yeah you, you got it you got the bases covered my dude you're good yes i think it's all good <laughs> uh felix uh, felix funky bmx what was oh, the most yeah. what was the most painful tattoo uh, top of my head for I sure believe it. yeah that sucked i just had a headache for like three days after yeah i don't i don't think i'll ever do that yeah <laughs> don't <laughs> and then johnny ice i, I dude, can't how recommend did, how's johnny ice doing? how does he claw make the best grinding products such as pegs hub guards and plastic pedals <laughs> <What>? <laughs> i don't know that's that's johnny ice likes there. eclat yeah. yeah how'd you how do you link up with uh eclat and we the people through paul um so since i was always riding in cologne um dave was like the product manager dave who dave Pedersen. okay um he moved here he's like from the uk moved here and when i came out here we were just like riding together went to like london to the rebel jam and everything together when like mo was still riding for the people as well so i kind of hanging out with him and then I was trying to kind of find something else after premium and um, they heard about it and then Paul hit me up just like I never I've never spoken to Paul or anything before he was just like want to go pro for with the people <laughs> Hell uh, <yeah. laughs> that's like uh, obviously yes that's dope um, when was this eight years ago nice I think, yeah, eight years ago. Um, and then a couple of years later, uh, I got on Ecla, Like You were pro at years. 16. Yeah. Good job. Fucking awesome. <laughs> yeah. No, yeah, it's like, they're from, you're from Cologne. It's like, everything's like super easy. And it's been there. Really cool we the People is from Cologne, them. is that you said? Yeah. Sick. And so you can go visit the factory or whatever? Yeah, yeah like the, the office and everyone yeah. where, where everyone That's works dope. at. Because yeah. I've been to sparkies and that's basically mm-hmm. it i don't think i've been inside of any other distributor and i'm curious what their all the operations look like because sparkies is pretty dialed it's pretty sick to see like yeah what goes on behind the scenes and there's a lot that goes on behind the scenes so it's it, cool it is pretty cool especially like seeing like fresh product or like uh often some often times like i come in and then there's like 3d printing some new pad or whatever yeah. and you get like the first look uh on it, it's like oh this this is cool you give input on products and shit yeah yeah i do all right well these questions keep coming in holy shit <laughs> uh but i we'll, we'll call it after this one what is like yeah. el curto says what is the hardest trick to do switch footed um bar spins took me a while to learn switch footed opposite Fucking a! <laughs> I can't um, even fathom <laughs> my brain. 
and I think uh, Smith Hardway is a kind of weird switch foot as well. I believe but it. But just the regular way. Switch one. Oh, okay. I'll switch. Yeah. Um, what clip are you most proud of out of your whole? Like, what comes to mind? One single clip out of everything that you've done. What are you most proud of? Like, say it's all it's all over. Your career's over, and you got to show somebody your favorite or just one clip. Which clip are you showing them? I guess for a whole while it was like the hard three whip, the first one. Yeah. Um, I feel like still to this day the the Pax nose whip was just because like the battle and everything behind it. I'm pretty hyped on that one. And the Trey clip I can't really talk about. <laughs> I yeah, think the secret that's like one. definitely like where the stoke is like super high. Right <laughs> Hell now. yeah! I can't wait. So, yeah. <clears throat> I think we did it, dude. I think we got gone Ooh. at least two hours, two and a half Sick. hours, maybe. Damn. Thanks for doing it, Felix. Yeah, Any last course. words? Thanks for having me. Yeah. Uh, I don't know. Yeah, thanks for having me. This was cool. Thanks for coming uh, on. Everyone, just keep riding. Stay safe. That's good advice. Keep riding. Stay safe. All right. <laughs> That's it. Thank you, guys. Bye. Yes. Hello, you've reached the end of the video. Thanks for watching another episode of Canode Knows. I'll see you next week. Have a good week, guys. And go ride. Thank you, Dig. <laughs>